Yeah, so I'm Nick Friend. Um, in 2003, I founded Breathing Color, which is a manufacturing company. Uh, we make canvas fine art paper and photography uh, papers for high quality printing. Um, and, and today I am the owner and CEO of Art Storefronts. Yeah, so today is all about new businesses or people who have struggled to get, call it less than 10 sales in the last year, right? So this is, um, this is one of my favorite workshops. Uh, it, it always is going to be just because I love the startup, you know, uh, situation and the mentality and, you know, um, you kind of have to hack away at it. And I think that this workshop is probably one of the most important ones because of, uh, you know, the difficulty in the early days of getting traction that goes for any business, but, uh, we're obviously here to work with, uh, our photographers and artists. So, um, looking forward to everybody's questions and hearing about your specific business situation, because it's all about you guys, um, and, uh, hearing about exactly where you're at so we can provide you with direct coaching. Okay. That's right. And we should mention that there always seems to be a, a tremendous amount of notes and links and such and resources uh, that are mentioned throughout the broadcast. And so sort of the way that we've come up with uh, handling that is there will be a web page. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, you can just type a message, type a comment, and the bot will send it to you. If you're here in the Zoom chat, um, inside the chat will be a link uh, that will have any and all resources. And we kind of just populate that uh, as we go on uh, on the fly. Um, and do what do you want to start? What do you want to start up with, Nick? Before we uh, get directly into questions, do you want to do you want to do the Instagram thing first and show that off, or do you? Well, actually, to... a couple couple of announcements first, okay. just to get those uh, out of the way. Um, number one, we are doing these live workshops every Tuesday and Friday uh, at uh, twelve thirty Pacific, two thirty Central, three thirty Eastern. Okay, and um, the format right now, and this may change, but you know. Uh, we basically have like three buckets of customers that we've sort of um, put together. And the first one is the one, this one right here, which is people who have either never sold before or have sold very little and they're just haven't gotten any traction with their art business yet. Bucket number two is people who have traditionally sold well offline, but just not online yet. And bucket number three is people who are selling really well. Okay. And so every Tuesday we're kind of alternating. And then the Friday workshops are just basically like, um, they're optional, you know, we're going to come up with our own topics. Uh, we may decide to, you know, do one of these buckets again. Um, but we're going to talk about, you know, whatever is most important and most interesting. And the most important thing too, is that, uh, is that you guys, you know, get your questions answered, you get the advice you need and you're constantly moving your business along. I'm excited about, you know, this is the second bucket that or the second time we've done this particular bucket or group of people. And I see some familiar faces who were here last time. So uh, that's awesome. I expect to see you guys all the time. And it's not, it's not that, that it's mandatory. It's here for you, right? But you've got, you know, myself, I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years. Um, I've built businesses into the eight figures. Um, I've started six companies. And, uh, you know, Patrick is a very experienced marketer. Um, he has a, a, a ton of experience in e-commerce, like a bunch of different companies. And he has actually been working with me for a long time on various companies. And I think he's one of, I, one of the most, one of the brightest marketers that out there, that's out there. And I think that the tactical that, that we're giving is, um, is pretty amazing. But the tactical needs to come with the support, you know, and everything behind it. It's the tactical alone, I don't think is necessarily enough. So that's why I'm excited about these. So. Yeah, so that's the workshop schedule. The second thing is, if you didn't notice, uh, today it was posted in the private members group. Um, we announced a print sale for Art Storefronts members only. Um, and it is approximately, it's 15% off if you do the fulfillment through uh, Bay Photo or uh, Graphic Dimensions, either or. And um, the whole purpose of this is we have this, we, we, we launched this at the beginning of the year, but it's basically, 
whenever we're asking you to discount or we're advising that you discount through the art marketing calendar, I think it's only fair if we discount too. So when we discount or when we're telling you to discount, we're going to discount too. So, um, and that's, you know, with the prints and, and all that stuff. So, so we're, that's what we're doing right now is obviously at this time, um, I, we've been a couple of different members have requested that they want to run some sort of a sale, like a COVID-19 sale of some sort. And so we put this together really fast and it's going to run for, I think, two weeks starting, um, Emily, when is it? Is it Thursday? Yeah. Okay. So it's starting this Thursday. It's going to run for two weeks and um, we will send various emails announcing this. The first post was made in the small wins group. So um, I encourage you guys to take advantage of that. Do whatever, do whatever you want with it. Launch a sale um, and feel free to ask about that today. Yeah, I think, you know, you, you can't also underscore the fact that every retail, you know, every art show, every outdoor thing is, is toast. And so we need to get creative and we need to ex continue to execute on things because we all have businesses to grow and succeed here. And so a great way to do it, I think, is, you know, at least from a digital marketing standpoint, is this, this notion of a print giveaway. And so, you know, we want to encourage you in every way imaginable. And, you know, we, we really want to figure out a way to get this the best in sync. Like we discount, you discount. If we're advocating that you go and you engage in this marketing opportunity, then we want to be able to give you lower prices to do it. Uh, so you don't take the hit financially. And I think that's really important. Cool. All right. I think we can get into it. Okay. I want to show one thing really quickly, and I'm going to have to figure out how to do this. Facebook, it's going to be easier for me to switch over. But let me just share my screen. It's going to be a bit of a mess, I think. But tell me, tell me when you guys are looking at this, and do you see the, sort of the cell phone here? Yes, I do. Okay. So this is an actual cell phone, and one of the things that um, we've been advocating quite seriously on is how easy some of these lives are, right? Like you guys are all on a live right now, and here I'm going to switch over to the phone on this one, on the Facebook one. And I thought this might be fun to just see because most people have not figured this out yet and are not doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and boot up Instagram, and let me just show you from scratch. And you can see up at the top is the story row, right, where everyone's stories are. Now, if you click on your story, okay, uh, we had a story up there already, so it's already playing. But if I click in the upper left-hand corner, you know, and, and it's essentially how you add to your story, I can scroll. Let me see how I do this. Normal boomerang here, layout, super zoom. No, it's not right. What do I do wrong this time? Hold on. Of course, it's buggy when you, when you do it yourself. Let's see. Is that, let me add to it. Uh, of course, of course. How is it going to let me add to this? That's weird. It's not letting me do it all of a sudden. Of course, this happens when it's live. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see if it gets me or not. Well, that's embarrassing. That's okay. Well, what would you see there? Well, I wanted to actually do it and go into it. I'll figure it out and we'll circle back to it. Um, in the meantime, we can just get right into questions. I don't know why that's being so buggy on me. Perfect. That's a good idea. I'll figure it out. Why don't we uh, go ahead and raise a hand or in the chat, um, you can raise your hand in the chat box in Zoom too. That also works um, and get any question that you'd like answered. And then also to, uh, you know, a lot of people are joining on Facebook. If you've got your questions on there, uh, we'll get them, into, get them into them that way as well. All right, who wants to go first? No early takers? Let me see what we have on Facebook. I see the uh, hmm. comments coming through here. Oh, Greg, yeah. Why don't we get Greg on? Okay, Greg, you should be unmuted. Go ahead. Greg, can you hear us? Hold on. 
right? That didn't work. <laughs> okay, just, that's on my end. Okay. Today is just all all technical difficulties. Um, you unmuted everybody. <laughs> oh, who was that? Is that Greg? I think it was no, Gene. it's Gene. But you unmuted everybody. <laughs> no, I'm watching you. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did unmute all. Yeah, we're still new to this thing. We figure it out as we go along. Um, <laughs> Okay, well, while people are getting their questions warmed up, do we want to just talk big picture, Nick? Sure. And is everybody familiar with the raise hand feature just to make sure that you can raise your hand? Oh, they're not. They're shaking their heads. No. Pat, uh, so there is a, there should be a button that you see. Um, I think it's on your right hand side. I don't see it right here because I'm on a full screen. But if somebody else see, uh, you know, Emily or Taylor, if you see it or if Patrick, um, it should be on like right above where the comments are or right where you do the comments. There's a thing where you can click to raise your hand. Um, and that's the way that we see you. And then we will unmute you so that you can ask questions. Do you guys see it? Yep. And we've got a hand raised. So let me, let me just jump right in. He's on. We got gotcha. you. Can you hear us? Yeah, Patrick. How are you doing? Man? Good, good, good. Happy, uh, happy COVID-19 slash quarantine. Um, and you're, <laughs> you're in Southern California too. So we, we've been in, uh, we've been in lockdown mode for a while now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so, uh, last time when I talked to you guys, you recommended it to get out there, sign up some art shows. And I did that. And, um, I'm going to be in a Laguna art fair. Um, so I'm going to be there for cool. two months and I went to a whole bunch of, uh, uh, I did a lot of research, all the farming markets are here. I did some research with all the uh, um, uh, art walks. There's about like about 17 of them. The one that I get really inspired to sign up for the Laguna Art Fair, I did get a set there for the month of June and July. I'm going to have a great shot to have a great display. I'm going to have a big booth. So that's something I did. I put it into action. And Good then, job. Boom, this whole COVID-19 thing happened. Yeah. Everything is uncertain. Of course. Uh, but Yeah. So that's kind of where I am. So anything out there, and I was actually just, you know, I reached up to uh, the city mayor. They're doing some fundraising. I offer some artwork. I said, I'd be happy if you want to do fundraise for donation, yada, yada, yada. And then she was excited. And then boom, all this happened. Everything's hold off. And uh, at this time, what do you recommend me to do? That's where I am. So did you attend the 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 um workshop that we did i think it was like a week and a half ago on uh the covid 19 specifically i did not know i've been no. so busy but now I'm oh don't vulnerable. worry no no worries i just want you to i want you to see that um okay. there was actually two so they okay. should be in our show notes um that are in the comments here there's a link to it um and uh we did a present we did a workshop um, specifically to go over what's going on and how you should be thinking about it. And, and then uh, we took some questions and things like that. And then there was one that we did the next day that was unconventional tactics specifically for the pandemic, like this time. Um, and uh, so those were, those were awesome sessions. A lot of creativity was in there. So I think I, I would definitely check those out. But in addition to that, we decided to make the, what's called the pandemic, uh, response marketing kit which will which is in the show notes here which our marketing team created for everybody for the art storefronts members to show you what we you know to give you all the resources of what we think you should do it in fact if you just go there everything should be linked in there um all the different resources and things like that that you can do but i think it's a good idea since this topic is like it's hot right now um to, to kind of talk about that for a second pat do you want to do you want to chat about it? Because I, I know that, you know, the discussions that we've had internally, it's obviously we know that you got to go digital right now, most of the time, right? We're, we're figuring out hacky ways of doing some different things. I think with this shelter in place, it's kind of, you know, um, all that stuff is kind of on hold. I think that's going to change in a couple of weeks. Like, let's call it like a month. It may not, but, but I think that I, I have a feeling given the research that I've done and things like that, that um, things are going to loosen up. I don't know what that's going to mean for like the art shows and the art fairs after that. I just mean that I think the economy is going to start getting back to work in some sort of phased approach. Um, but, uh, but right now it's, it's at least for right now it's digital, 
right? So the tactic that we've talked about that I really like, um, and I know Pat really likes, and I think that's, that might've been what he was going to be showing potentially, maybe not, but um, it is the, the tactic of um, using your giveaways, right? And contacting, um, you know, influential Facebook group owners um, and Instagram influencers. Um, and, uh, the ones where you believe quality leads will be in there. First of all, this is a phenomenal tactic in general, right? Like at all times of the year, this is going to be pretty powerful, but, but, uh, getting like doing a giveaway either specifically for them or, or sharing a giveaway. Um, uh, I want to get Patrick's, uh, uh, opinion on that, but, um, that tactic is having a lot of success across members of the platform, a lot of success. So the whole, the whole theory behind it is that these people are managing groups or they are managing a following of, of followers on Instagram, right? And they need to provide something of value to their followers, right? So there is a win-win there. And um, so what we've done is we've got a little playbook cooked up for that, that you can follow. And that's in the pandemic kit. It'll be in the show notes too here. And it'll tell you exactly what to do, like how to, how to research them on both platforms, it will tell you, we've even written the copy for you of how we would approach like direct messaging them through Facebook and Instagram with the exact language um, and, uh, and stuff like that. So um, Pat, let me kick it over to you though. Yeah, and I, I can't interrupt you because I've got mic issues and so I'm having to like toggle mine on and off. So I just know that, just saying that to say that. Sure. Um, I would say a couple of things, one, on my drive to coffee today, okay, and, and, and I guess I would say even before that, so obviously all of our ability um, for, for these, you know, in-person shows, anything retail, all of that's toast. We know that's toast, so what we can do, what can we do, right? Like that's really the premise that we're operating under right now for the, for the you know, somewhat immediate future. And I would say I was driving to get coffee this morning. And there's like sort of a main drag where I live and no joke, a guy lived on the main drag and he was clearly an artist, whether he's been listening to the show, I don't know, but he had all of it on the driveway. Like he was having a garage sale. All of his art was on a driveway, all, all set up, all spread out. And he didn't have a sign or anything like that or, or balloons or, you know, want some art, any reasonable offer, you know, accepted or whatever, anything. Um, but I like to think that, that he had that in mind. Right. So, that, that's about the only uh, uh, in-person uh, uh, hack. And we've talked a little bit about that one. We've talked a little bit about potentially doing a drive-through art show and what that might yield. And so I do think that those are um, decent opportunities to do something that is still in person. But independent of that, it's about what we can do right now to get attention in the most effective way possible. And quickly, Gretchen's looking for the Zoom link. Taylor, um, can you post it in small ones if it's not there already? I'm sure it's there. Gretchen, you probably just need to scroll around. Um, we normally advocate, okay, when you're just getting started, digitally speaking, and I think that's what, you know, the majority of people in this group are, we normally advocate that you run a contest, right? And the contest we find to be, and we have in-depth playbooks on how to do this, um, both the simple way and the more complicated way. And what we normally find is it's a mixed bag, right? And when I say it's a mixed bag, some artists run it and it's crickets. They get, they have very little success, right? And I think... We've got two people on this comment chain that are, are responding in kind to that. Like one, uh, who was it here? It was Steve. And so he ran the Game of Thrones giveaway, okay? And he got, only got about six opt-ins. And I think you recommended it. And so what happened in that situation? Why did it not work for him, right? And then I think I saw another person in the Facebook comments saying, hey, you know, this thing's been going for, for 10 days and I only got 10 opt-ins. Um, do you think I should keep it going and extend it or just end it and move on, right? And which are great questions. And so what we find is that if you follow the contest playbook, especially when you're just starting out, let me define that. You have no one on your email list. You have five people that like your Facebook page. You have 10 people on Instagram. You don't have any attention that you're bringing to bear early on. Some people are having success and getting it up and going, but some people are just, they're, they're not. It's too hard to get off the ground because tactically speaking, when you don't have any attention at all in the beginning, you have to get really creative, i.e. get all your family and friends to get on there and share it and do you a solid in that. So some, like, some people see success, some don't. 
it's a great exercise either way. I mean, you know, we have people posting in the group on a regular basis. Like I got 150 emails or 200 emails, 250 emails, and you know, I got two sales out of it. And so we have everything on that side of the scale to, you know, it just didn't work like some of the ones in the Facebook group. A-okay, fantastic exercise to run. And no matter if you can't run them successfully right now and you can only run them later once, once you've built up some attention, it is absolutely a high ROI activity to spend your time learning how to do that. That's just an amazing thing. So I'll just say that to say that. The new tactical that we've sort of come up with for you know this COVID situation and this lock-in situation, or probably just a great idea, period, is again, yes, the Facebook groups and the Instagram uh, influencer pages, curator pages, if you wanna call them that. And, and, and I shouldn't say influencer because that's a loaded word with a bunch of baggage. So we have an in-depth uh, Facebook Live that we did that will be in the show notes. So if you're watching this on Facebook, leave a comment. The bot will get it to you. Uh, for everyone else, it'll be in the chat window. And the example that I used originally was, um, I can't remember his first name, Lawrence, ah, Larry Jolly, right? And he had a golden retriever painting and the thing went viral a few years ago and was just really selling hot and then it flamed out and it kind of it kind of got quiet. And so he's like, hey, how do I fire this thing back up? And the idea is, is that you either find Facebook groups, you know, that are super interested in that particular niche. Uh, in his case, it was, you know, dog stuff. Uh, or you can find Instagram influencers. And, and I can even show how to do the Instagram influencer thing. But this is just, it is such an easy strategy. And it's a fantastic strategy because especially early on, all you're struggling for is getting enough attention, getting enough eyeballs to your art. And where everyone usually goes is directly to cold traffic. I'm going to give Facebook or Instagram ads. And we don't believe that that is the most effective way to do it right now in the slightest, like not even close. Uh, we believe that it, it is it is a far better idea to go somewhere where there is a ton of attention already and leverage a print giveaway, which is like the primary reason that we're beating our print vendors up to get us these lower prices, because this is absolutely what we want you to do. And so I might as well just get a screen share on again. And well, let me, before you do ahead. that real quick, I just want to, I, I want to say, to the people who, I think this is a really, really important point to those of you who have not gotten a lot of emails on your giveaway. Um, when Patrick was talking about, you know, like, you know, you're, you're, when people are starting out, they're basically starting out with like their friends and family as they're following. They don't have like an art buyer following yet. So if you, if the giveaway as designed did not work for you, then your followers on Instagram and Facebook are worthless to you right now. Okay, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. You you need and you and I and I'm I'm being like sort of harsh about it, but I'm not I'm really not. I'm just I want you guys to have the truth. There's nothing there. So, you know, you need to get another lead source somewhere because like that that's the way that I that's the way that I've seen it is that the people who have done really well, they had something there. And sometimes your friends and family can really amplify that. You have qualified leads in there, right? Who will actually buy your work. But sometimes it's not those people. And that can vary depending on who the artist or photographer is and who's following them and whatever they've done over the last couple of years, right? So if, you, if it doesn't work, it doesn't mean that the, the, the tactic doesn't work. It just means that you're, it, you're, you're going after a group of people that don't care about what you're doing or your artwork or enough to buy it, right? Um, and so that's okay. That happens all the time with different you know, channels of marketing that you're going to test. And you just need to go, okay, that's not working right now. I gotta go to the next one, right? And so that said, we're talking about another way. Like, okay, if you don't have that at all to, to start with, if you don't have some like, you know, some seeds in, in, in order to like amplify and then get you know, 70 or 100 emails from it, then you can't, you can't do that yet. But what you can do is you know, use the giveaway concept and apply it towards you know, what we're talking about here, which is the influencers and the groups. And the reason for that is because they have the following, right? They've got the following. Now, if it doesn't work with either of those, with the specific person that you contact, it's because that specific, you know, influencer or group does not contain people who care about your work, right? So you, you ultimately have to find people that care about your work. And it's always a process of, trial and error. And that's why I say you got to dip your toe into these things. And that said, um, you know, we have a, we have a list, um, very important, uh, for art storefronts members. It's called the ideas, uh, the idealist for gener generating leads. And it's basically a list of 
um, uh, that, that all the art storefronts members as well as us have come up with to, to give to you guys to show you what has worked. There's a ton of them on there. And so you can go down them one by one. So you have ideas of how to generate leads. Cause at the end of the day, that's all it is. You got to get people into the funnel one way or another. So if one thing doesn't work, you got to move to the next one. So that print of giveaway, uh, I have, how does that look like? How does the format look like? I have a thousand on Facebook, I have a thousand people in Instagram. Um, how, how do I present it? How, so how we have a whole, you, you just follow the art marketing calendar. I mean, we tell you literally step-by-step step exactly what to do. Just follow yeah. that. And if you have any problems at all, um, go into the Small Wins Facebook group and our team will help you. Okay from start to finish. Like the whole point is we want to make this stuff as easy as possible for you to just go boom, 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 boom. We're constantly updating it. I mean, we literally updated it probably a week ago with new tactical based on things that we've learned. So if, if you're on this and you also have ran a print giveaway like six months ago, it's not the print giveaway from today because that thing has been, you know, adjusted and, um, and improved to get even better results. So yeah, like the, if you if you if you've got something to work with already, Isan, like that's exactly where you want to go. That's a that's that's what you want to do next for sure. And I think my suggestion is to make it a little, um, uh, like make the tone of your language like uh, consistent with what's going on right now. Like, do you know what I mean? Like maybe you, you're doing a giveaway and you know you're donating something or you know whatever. Maybe you're giving it. You know, there's there's a way to do that. Um, and maybe some other people have some ideas, uh, but yeah, I just, I think everything that you're doing from a marketing standpoint right now should be a little sensitive to the time. Yep. We've got, we, we've got a ton on that. And you know, it's so interesting to look, so I'm, I'm just like scrolling through the chat and it's like, you have a total mixed bag of some people that have done well and some people that just haven't got it going at all. So if you haven't got it going at all, don't worry. It's nothing that, that that's nothing to be upset about. Like you ran a test on it. You know, I could see Steven Cruz got four. Nick Boren got 15. Uh, uh, Muffy Clark Gill got four in the most recent promotion. And then, um, you know, Greg is like, I've gotten a great response on both of my first two giveaways, approximately 200 signups each time. So, you know, the, the, the situation is you're going to, you're going to get a mixed bag, but I, I actually do believe that this new tactical, um, that we've worked up on, on Instagram and with the Facebook groups is a great way to go about it. Now I see, uh, Vincent has raised his hand, and so I want to get to his question next, but in, 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 a, in a quick shift of gears, I have an interesting one on Facebook that's worth taking, I think. And it's, it's from Treen Churchill, and it says, I've had a hard time defining my niche as specifically as the example about the painter who paints golden retrievers. And it says, I paint memories based on family uh, album photos, so figurative work that has a feeling of memory and a dream. How do I make it tangible into what I paint, right? And this is this is like a you know the, the niche type of a question that I feel like we get a whole a whole bunch. Like we get this question a ton, right? And it's a great question. Um, number one, you're going to end up being the brand. That's always the case. And so you know when you're attempting to sell something that that is is you know non tangible, there's not an easily defined niche. Like you know, it, the, I think the easiest exercise that I like and the best way I think about it, it's like, okay, how do you define your work? What would I Google to find it? And think about that for a second. What would I Google to find your style of work? Is, is that an easy question to answer, yes or no? If it's not, then the good news is, is that you really don't ever have to worry about SEO because no one's able to find it that way. But, but the other is like, okay, that's, that's the cross that you have to bear. Everyone's business is gonna be a little bit different. Maybe you don't have golden retriever paintings and, and that's a-okay. So one, you're gonna be a big part of the brand, two, there are still other niches, and especially as it pertains to this Instagram, Facebook technique that are sharing amazing art um, from across the board and across different spectrums and you know, are just doing amazing images of the day. So you can still find uh, uh, segments out there where you can run these giveaways and, and, and run into them. And then also too, you're the brand in that instance as much as you know, your lack of easily definable artwork that you do. Um, and, we, and we have a ton of artists that do incredibly well, and I don't think it's easy to define what they do either. Um, so I think it's, I think it's just a real mixed bag. There is, is, is what I would say, but let's go to, uh, Trina, you got Trina, she's a, well, she's a, yeah, she's an art storefronts member. I believe, um, I recognize the name and I would say you should be on this call right now, um, or in the future so that we can talk about your niche because my, the way that I, the way that I think about, you know, niches is that I don't think, I don't think you get to choose your niche. 
I think you, you, you choose your niche in the sense that you paint things or you shoot things that, that like move you and, um, and that you, you like doing, that like you're inspired by. But ultimately, if you have multiple different niches that you have, the market is going to decide, right? Like that's just the truth. The market is the truth teller. And so there's this law, it's called Pareto's law. You guys are gonna hear me say this all the time, but it's super important. 80% of your sales will come from 20% of your products. It's the 80-20 rule, right? So normally when somebody says to me, Nick, I don't know what my niche is and they've actually made sales in the past, I go, okay, tell me about your sales. And I, 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 wanna, I wanna know everything. I wanna know where you've made them. I wanna know what the content was, what images they were, what subject matter. And oftentimes, in fact, almost 100% of the time, almost, um, there, it's either 70% or 80% are coming from one specific group or type of subject matter. And it's like, okay, the market's telling you at least for now, um, that, that, you know, that you're adding some value to those people's lives. That's why they're buying it. And it depends on how far you've gone. Like if you haven't sold very much, it could be at the very beginning of that. But if you've actually sold a decent amount, um, and, and you notice that, then you kind of know what your niche is. And I know sometimes people are like, no, but I don't want that to be my niche. Like I love painting this other stuff or I love doing this other stuff. Like I hear that all the time and I totally get it. I totally get it. But what I would say is that like, you know, if, if that niche, you know, puts enough food on the table and money in your pocket to allow you to paint the other stuff more often, then that's, that might be the way that it has to go. Right. So that's usually how it is. Okay, let's start getting into the uh, hands raised questions. I'm going to start with yeah, you, Vincent. You're you're unmuted. Yeah, real quick. Yeah. I, I hate to I hate to I hate to stop you real quick. There's just so many questions in here on the chat about the giveaway. Mm -hmm. I think they need to be addressed because you know Emily and the team have mentioned that there's a lot of you know giveaway questions just in general. So um, I'm going to just run through these things real quick. Okay. So. Um, uh, dealership news. I don't have a name on this person, but they said, I'm going to be running the new website giveaway, uh, in the next day or so. How do I combine that with this print giveaway? I think it is that like you, you're just happen to be doing your new website giveaway. Um, at this time, that's your print giveaway. And I would just, again, add some language that makes it, you know, um, uh, what is the, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you know, sensitive to what's going on right now. Um, and, and I think we have that in the pandemic response kit. I think the language is in there. So, so check that out. Um, if not, Taylor, can you add something or maybe uh, uh, comment? Oh, you said right there, the new website giveaway is the print giveaway. Okay, cool. All right, so. Um, Matt Pearson asked, or yeah, I think it's Pearson asked, can you do too many giveaways? Yeah, you totally can do too many giveaways and they're kind of, um, labor intensive so i found that once a quarter to start out is a good is a good clip to aim for uh if you have the ability to dovetail one around you know like say you're a wildlife photographer and earth day is coming up great time to do it right like say all of your photos or massively romantic in nature do it around uh, valentine's day or if you pet dogs do it on national pet day whatever it is there's 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 a holiday out there for just about anything in today's day and age so it's always a good idea to dovetail around those. I think as you start to get momentum um, and you really start going that, you know, you, you'll, you'll adjust it up or down as you see fit. But, you know, the bigger, the bigger you get and, and the more attention you have access to, like just the more powerful, I would say, the, the, the giveaway uh, becomes across the board. So that would be how I would answer that. And, you know, I think... Um, a lot of people, a lot of people are asking like, okay, well, if I really am just getting started, just getting started totally from scratch. And I think I saw the comment on Facebook um, from Masashi Otsu, uh, who I think is a new customer too. If you're just getting started, I would, I would run the Facebook groups and or Instagram curator page before I would probably run a contest on my own page because obviously you don't have a bunch of, of help to get it going. If you do want to run the contest on your own, this is a great opportunity to reach out to family and friends and buddies and be like, can you hook a brother or sister up? Can you share this thing as far and wide as possible and help me get some gas going? Because it, it's sort of like, um, you know, I think I, I, I don't have the ability to audit every single solitary contest and I see some do well and I see some that don't. And I think in all the cases when you don't, there's some sort of initial momentum, initial spark or, 
you know, think about rolling a snowball down the hill and it starts, it just, you need a little bit to get that momentum going. And then once you do, you end up getting past the threshold and the devices and the tactics that we have in there, you know, that encourage the sharing and encourage uh, building the engagement. That's when they really start to kick in and the thing gets a life of its own. And, you know, we, we talk about the contest and when they work, like, Show me some. Show me another art hack or 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 um, art or photography selling hack where you can run one of these things and go from a zero email list to 100 to 150 people in a week. Like it's insanely effective when it works. That's a really hard thing to do. Get 150 emails on your list. Uh, otherwise, so that's that's where I would um, stay focused, Masashi. It's not necessarily on the art calendar. It'll it's it's in the show notes uh, for this thing and 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 just follow that technique. Figure out how to do it. And we can even get into the tactile if you want to show it, Nick. I don't. It's up to you. But I think that is where I would start if I had zero Facebook fans, zero sales, zero Instagram followers. I know people are going to be locked in for the next two, three weeks. God forbid months. Um, that would be that would be where I would put you know all of my eggs. Find someone, find an account that has a ton of attention. You're going to ask that account, ask that group, ask that Instagram page. Hey, you have a ton of attention. Everyone is at home right now. They are all bored out of their mind. Let's do something fun. Let's do something fun. If I gave you a print, you can take a look at my store. Here's my URL. Come take a look at my store. You can pick any print you want on this on my shop. No problem at all. You let me know, and let's run some sort of contest to your friends or followers. Uh, anything, anything uh, 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 is is game, right? Like however he wants to run it to their friends, their followers, and just give me a link back to my site, and that's it, or a link to my Instagram account if you're on Instagram, and 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 let it play out and see how it goes. And I think, as I said on the you know, on the earlier one, you also really, you know, y- y- you need to do it more than once because, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to run this once and fail once, but run it three times. It's not so easy. One of them is really going to end up popping. So that's what I would say. Yeah. And I think, you know, some other things for people to, to remember too, is that as you're doing different giveaways, um, like in order to, in order to keep them fresh, like, do them on different media types as well. Like it gives you an opportunity to showcase like, you know, uh, metal or acrylic or different things that people haven't seen and make sure that you do a video of those too, because it's really hard to appreciate how awesome those pieces are, but show the product. Like you have to realize like on your website, when you're showing a flat image and these people aren't actually seeing the physical product, like show the physical product. It'll really help. You know, so that's, that, that's just like merchandising 101. And, um, and then the other part too, is that if you, if your budget is tight, um, I want to remind you guys that the, the, the cost of a print on like a photo paper on any of the photo papers from the printing companies is so low and the quality is so high. So that includes like a photo gloss. Uh, semi-gloss, a luster, or a metallic photo paper. I think the metallic might be slightly higher. Um, But typically, any of those are on the lowest end. Um, And so what that means is your cost is really low. So you could offer a, you know, a 24 by 36 or something that feels like they're getting something great, but it might only cost you like 20 or 25 bucks, you know? And uh, and so you can leverage that, you know, that's that's an advantage that you guys have. And I would leverage that because at the end of the day, like Patrick was talking about, like what, what marketing tactics are there that bring in leads and customers that's better than this. And like, and he's, he's explaining something that the way the marketers think about things and you guys as business owners, it's very important that you think about things the same way, which is, you know, customer acquisition costs money, right? Usually like it it costs money, whether it's your time or it's actual dollars. And so if you're giving away a print, and then you take that and you divide that by the number of emails you got, you have a cost per email. And so if you compare that to other methods of acquisition, you will ultimately find that it is a phenomenal uh, and, uh, and low cost way of acquiring leads. Now, if it doesn't work with your own following, then you need to move to the, the influencer group owner tactic. That's what I would do if it didn't work for you. I would immediately go to that. Now, if it has worked for you, you want to do that as well. Because if your giveaway has worked, the smartest thing that you can do next is amplify that giveaway as much as you can to all these other channels, right? It's like taking this giveaway that works, you got a hundred emails off it and, you know, multiply that times two or three, get like two or 300% the 
the results by, by getting that giveaway to other people that are not your current following. Okay. Uh, Matt asked, uh, or, or uh, yeah, has anybody done an original giveaway? Absolutely. Absolutely. I always tell people that if your business traditionally has been originals, and this is for people usually that have been selling offline for quite some time and they sell originals, don't shift to prints and like do everything with prints. Like if you have a business that's working with originals, do an original giveaway, have the art marketing calendar apply to you and your business that's working, you know, and that's why we have that workshop for that bucket of people so that we can work on those things. But, but, uh, typically if you have originals sitting around and they're in your garage, um, or wherever, like give away the original, you, you have this big price point. It's way more exciting. Um, and, uh, I would consider doing that for sure. We've got a couple, um, we've got a couple other ones in here. It says the, the yeah. winner did not contact them when they, when they won the giveaway. I mean, the way that spam email, like emails go to spam so often, I bet that your email just went to spam. Um, so I would email them one more time and say, last chance until this date, if you don't contact me, I'm letting somebody else win and then let the next winner, uh, win it. Uh, cool. Matt Pearson says, I'd like to sync a giveaway, um, with Instagram ads. So I want to ask that, answer that one. And then, uh, Jared asked, I've seen some other giveaways that involve extra entries. Uh, so, you know, if they share the post, follow on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What are your expands, uh, thoughts on expanding the reach with that? Um, first, in terms of syncing the ads with giveaways, let's, let's separate the two, right? Like there's the true print giveaway that you're running on your own, whether you run that on your page or you run that on, on Facebook Messenger, which we're sort of not advocating anymore. Um, let's hold those over in sharp contrast to the new technique that we're sort of advocating, which is a tr contacting someone that owns a Facebook group or owns an Instagram page that has a ton of attention and allowing them to do the giveaway for you. So there's a big difference between those two. So if you're running the giveaway on your own page, you know, on, on your website, uh, doing the emails, um, with ads there, you can, you can do, but sometimes I found the ads just to be counterproductive. I actually really never got them to work. Now, the majority of the contests that, that I was running uh, were with Messenger when that was a thing. And, you know, the whole encouraging people to do all of these other things uh, to get the extra entries is the greatest hack of the entire thing. Absolutely, that's what you want to do. Um, absolutely, you want to give them the ability to do that because it just works so incredibly well. So that's that's how I would answer that. Yes, you do. Um, but again, you know, when I created the first giveaway playbook that, that involved Messenger, it was the wild, wild west days and you could get away with a lot. Since then, um, so many things have changed on the Messenger platform that we're just not advocating um, that if anybody that hasn't gotten started with it gets started with it. So, you know, you just run the regular giveaway that we have the playbook on. And yes, you can absolutely encourage sharing in that capacity. Um, the only time you can't encourage sharing is when it's in a quid pro quo type of a scenario with Facebook and Facebook finds out you could get a little slap on the wrist there. So that's, that's something that we're not advocating. Um, let's go to some of the raised hands uh, just because they've been going for a while and then we'll get back to the chat too. So if you've got, if you've got questions in the chat, um, you can keep answering them there, but I'm going to go ahead and unmute uh, Vincent. Vincent, if you're still there, you're unmuted. Go ahead. I'm here. All right. How are you doing? Hey, Vincent. Hey, um, I've been with you a little while and I've tried a lot of your different marketing techniques. I, I really appreciate your marketing advice. Uh, eventually I'm going to get something that works here, but I, I've tried contests. I've tried mini chat um, with limited success. Uh, I've even ran ads on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I'm trying to build my, my mailing list because I only have about 150 people on my list. And most of my business comes from the two galleries that I'm in, and they're both closed right now. So I'm trying to um, work on my webpage more. I know that uh, my webpage probably needs some more pictures on it. I, I've got less than 100 uh, pictures on it. And um, so this morning I was working with, my, with your new uh, page, the experience page. I, I get a lot of my traffic on Instagram in Facebook from my videos that I create. So I, I, I created a video, I, I put up a sale uh, with the experience page 
and I'm going to do this every month, but I ran into a snag. Uh, I, I contacted uh, one of the uh, people on the chat line and um, they could, I couldn't get the audio working. And I was told that the uh, developers did not uh, put that into the video that I, I can't get any audio. So without my narration, I can't really give a, uh, an effective uh, presentation on how I create my images, which are quite involved. They're uh, photo montages that I use many different images. Um, so I, I, I actually like to get that, see if maybe in the future you can get some audio going on. With there, that. Is a, there is an option for that. Um, what the, I'm, I'm guessing that the, the video that you added was a background video and it wasn't like a vi YouTube video, like right on the page. There's a different option for adding a video that will play with audio on it. Yeah, well, no, it's a, it's a video that plays with audio. It plays on Facebook, it plays on Instagram. Um, and I created it myself to make it play. Yeah, no, I don't, that's not what I mean. What I mean is the feature of the experience page. There's, you add it, there's a background video option. And so it doesn't matter whether you have audio or not, it's not gonna play audio because it's a background video, okay? And there's a, there's a foreground, let's call it, video option that will actually play the audio. I will make sure that the team knows that what you're trying to do because I think that they don't understand, and and somebody will reach out to you uh, and show you how to do that. Is that the SoundCloud? They had mentioned SoundCloud. Being nope. something. It's just yeah. linking a YouTube video right in there. It's super easy. It's just that it's the feature is like a week old. So I, it, I and there's a lot of functionality in there. So I'm sure that you know they just don't know um, like exactly how to do that yet. Okay. All right, so um, basically, I'm, you know, I'm getting very few orders on my site because I, I don't have enough eyeballs on my website. But the, the pictures I have on there are very are selling very well at the art galleries. So I figure if I get enough eyeballs on there, you know, I should be able to do well. Absolutely. Little, little so how long have you been at this, at, like on the, with, on the digital side? So you've been selling indirectly through galleries. How long have you been doing direct? online well just in general selling direct like you to the customer nobody oh, in between about 15 15 20 years okay and and your email list is 150 people yeah i i haven't started my email list until maybe three years ago okay and selling directly um uh where were it so i'm assuming that Okay, can you tell me like approximately how many sales, like how much revenue do you do a year selling directly? Like not on, I guess not online. About 20,000. Okay. So I'm assuming that you're only collecting the emails of, of your customers and not like leads. Well, it's difficult to collect um, the leads of my customers. Sometimes some of the galleries are co-op. Not everybody is tuned into getting the uh, email from the customers they buy, which is a little bit of a problem there. I see. So I suppose that that's interesting because that in that situation, it's still a little bit indirect. It's not completely indirect, but you know, you weren't you weren't there to like they weren't necessarily transacting with you. But I guess with the co-op, it, it feels like it's that way, right? It, yeah. Or it kind of operates that way, but you're not able to. Um, there was some, there was another art storefronts member who we've been, you know, we, we've been talking with who was in a co-op gallery and um, selling well and is now implementing a lead capture strategy in there to try to, you know, capture, uh, get the email addresses of people that are interested in order to like, you know, amplify that even further. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you questions because I'm kind of digging a little bit. So, so you over the last three years that you've been selling, you've been selling through galleries indirectly and then through this co-op, anywhere else? Uh, well, I would have a, um, a show here a couple times a year. I have a gallery in my home. So I, I have, I'm associated with another group of artists who have shows on Mother's Day and different, different events like that. So I would do that. And then I'd have a chance to personally sell and I do pretty well. Okay. So that's interesting. So like, 
what you know what I'm kind of hearing is um, you know and I, and I know like the times that we're in right now are are interesting. So I'm going to speak yeah. outside of that. I'm going to speak outside of that. But the usual mindset that you want to have here is that because you're actually somebody who's been selling well, like you know, or selling at least you know for the last couple of years and selling your work. Yeah. You usually want to look at you want to look at like where are the channels? Those are all different marketing channels, right? All those different ways that you're making sales. <laughs> and, uh, and how, how much more can you amplify them? And by that, I mean, you know, doing more of them or getting more out of them, right? And the, the usual mistake that people are making is they're not collecting leads anywhere where they are making sales. They're only collecting the email address of the customer that buys from them, right? And so if, if, there's either a way to do that or there's not, right? Like with the galleries, there's really not. Obviously, they want they want to own the customer. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do. If with the co-op, if you can find a way to do that, that would be amazing. You know, um, like you could use the QR codes um, potentially if that's allowed. Yeah. Like for every single product, and then if people do that, you know, and they go to your site and the lead captures there, you might collect more. Well, you know, I do that. I have QR codes on all my prints, but my my uh, the people that buy my work are um, are older, and and they not they they're not too uh, computer savvy. Some of them, so that that's a little bit of an issue. Yeah, and it's I mean that's probably a function of the fact that like the only eyeballs that are seeing your art are a certain clientele that are going right. to these physical locations, right? Like right. the, that, that, that you've done that. I mean, but, I get, orders, I get orders on my website from people who have seen my work at the gallery and then they'll go on my site and they'll see uh, a little bigger size or something more in line of what they want. Tell me about your, uh, what is your website address? Uh, VincentDeLeo.com. Is that D-I-L-E-O? Yes. Okay. I might have ha I might have it typed wrong. Oh, I, yeah, I do. My bad, Vincent. Pat, are you pulling it up, or do you want me to share? I think you have to, right? No, you can share. Your host. So, um, okay, it's it says you've uh, disabled screen sharing. That's okay. Vincent, which content is it that's selling well for you? The ghost ship is, is my best seller. The surreal section? Yes. Got it. And what else? No hands bridge. Is it mostly the surreal stuff? No. Uh, pictures of Italy, uh, pictures of Holland. Those are in the travel section. Interesting. Okay. And um, okay, so then uh, let's go back to, um, so you have a list of 150. That's the part that bums me out is because, you know. Me too. You, yeah, yeah, well, it, it's okay. I mean, you're starting, you're doing the right thing now. That's yeah. the most important thing. Like, you know, in building a business, you've got to build a lead list. You've got to build a customer list. That's the whole thing. And so, you know, if, as, as you can see, I like if I, if I deconstruct my, my thinking, what I'm doing when I'm asking you those questions, I'm like, is there a way to like get anything more out of that? Like, you know, to keep doing those things, um, you know, outside of the pandemic, of course, but to keep doing those things, but yet um, collect a lot more, because if you do that, it's a very successful, there's a, it's, it's a very successful strategy to use offline to like foment online. Okay. Like we have a lot of people on the platform who do extremely well doing shows and all sorts of offline like tactics to gather email addresses and, and customers. Um, and then they take that online, they start emailing them and they follow the art marketing calendar and they do the follow-up marketing and they run giveaways and the giveaways and all of that stuff is exactly how you start, you know, really, um, uh, like, uh, compounding. Right. So, 
because social media and all that stuff facilitates sharing with other people. And that's how you take a list and get it to be way bigger, you know? So, um, so if there's a way to do that offline, then you should look for every way that you could possibly do that. Okay. Let, now, let me ask you one more question about the experience page. Um, if I created like, 10 experience pages and I use the keywords I what what I want to do and and I don't want to have them in my navigation I I will Google be bots be able to tell me, uh, tell me what you're trying to do I'm, I'm trying to get eyeballs on my website based on certain uh best-selling pictures so I'll, I'll create one with the ghost ships or one with the picture of Italy and I'll use keywords that uh, focus on that. And uh, so will that experience page pop up if someone types in ghost ship or Italy or uh, what, what I'm trying to do is to get uh, these pages out there. Are you referring to like a Google search? Like are you? Are you yeah. No, yeah. they won't. I mean, they won't. well, they will like, or I mean, they, that that's a topic called search engine optimization, which is right. a bigger topic. If right. you have something, if you have content and keywords that you know nobody's really typing in, it's really niched out. Then then it's possible that you could do that and show up. But otherwise, uh, Patrick and I have a, a a much broader you know discussion about search engine optimization. And how it's so overdone and overplayed. Right. It's like a marketing tactic that's like stopped working ten years ago. You yeah. know, so it's it's not a great. It's and and some people. There was somebody who commented about it, so I might as well say it. They're like, you know, you guys like downplay the importance of um, SEO, and it's not that we like we definitely don't downplay the importance of it. It's a wrong way of saying it. It's just I downplay the importance of anything that is a waste of time for you guys. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. I, I know if, 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 if I look at your content and I look at how you would SEO it and I see that there is like a, a niche, it's like probably one out of 50,000 people that I would go, okay, maybe there's, it's worth putting in a hundred hours into this. Right. But otherwise there's just way better tactics and, and ways to get attention um, that uh, will be a much better use of your time, you know? Okay. So, um, so, you know, in your case, have you done a giveaway yet? I've done a give, giveaway. I've done contests. I've done video contests uh, where I've held up the pictures and uh, th that works somewhat, but- um, yeah, really You just didn't. don't have a big enough following yet. So that's okay. Yeah. So you're kind of falling into this bucket right here that we're talking about. Um, I shouldn't say bucket because I used that earlier, but um, uh, you're, you're, you're in, the, in the spot with the people where the giveaways didn't necessarily work yeah. or work well enough, right? So. So then what you want to do is, is move right to the contacting Facebook group and Instagram group. Um, I did that yesterday. <laughs> I, I started doing that and I heard Patrick talk about that. I thought it was a great idea. So I, I started contacting. I haven't, I only sent out two letters, awesome. uh, but I'm going to send some more out. Yeah. You, you like, you're just playing a game, Vincent. That's just like pressure over time. I, I, that's what I'll tell you. Like you, you like you're gonna find it. You're gonna have to try some different things, you know. But because you're, you're you've already proven that your work sells. You sell in galleries. You sell in a co-op gallery. This is just a matter of just you know hacking away, trying a tactic, adjusting. Right. We'll get you there. Like you will what, get. There. What what I was gonna do with that experience page I was telling you about with the uh, audio and the video. Uh, I was going to offer a um, a gift card to people who would like to buy that, and and I would surprise them with the amount of the gift card depending on the size of their order. So I've already have gift cards set up on my site. So, uh, but they would have to contact me, let me know what size, and then I would send them a gift card. But now, another thing is when I went to uh, put my email address in, usually you can have a link that would um, create an email uh, opening. It didn't, didn't happen on that particular uh, page format there. Yeah, you'd have to link to like a, a form page to like do that. A form but page. I, it, it sounds complicated. 
you yeah. know? Like what you're, what you're doing sounds a little complicated. Yeah, it is. You know what I mean? When like, and I say that only because like, you know, Pat, you, 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 I'd love to hear what you have to say about this, but, but really Vincent, it's just, I think 90% of your, your, your business and marketing time, right. Should just be spent on just attacking like different groups of potential marketing channels. Right. Yeah. Because you, you already know your stuff sells. So I think if you just work backwards and you're like, okay, here's my ghost ship, like, who, what, what, like, or like what groups of people or uh, Instagram influencers might have people who like this image. And then you do the Italy and then you, you kind of go that route. I think that the more of those that you do, you're going to get just a dramatically high return on, on investment of your time. Uh, you know what I mean? Rather than monkeying around with a bunch of pages. Cause I think once yeah. you find one of those and you're just doing giveaways and it's just like, like, I would love to see like, you having like in the next like call it like 60 to 90 days like you might have like 10 or 15 giveaways running individually for that specific influencer right you're not running one for all of them at the same time you've got one running for one of them one running for another and you're just kind of investing like you know whatever it is for that cost of the print 30 bucks or whatever you want to do you know try one of the obviously you wouldn't do don't do 10 if the first one or two doesn't work like pause and figure out what's going on there. But, um, but well, that, gives me, that gives me more direction. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. That's like, that's what I would do. Like, I mean, if I were you, that's exactly what I, especially right now, like, because we can't do anything else, yeah. you can follow that playbook and we've written everything out for you. I mean, the language that we have that, that Patrick put together is just, it's just genius, right? Like we, we've been doing this type of stuff for so many years that we know like the way that you want to approach these people in like a nice way to get them to do something. So if you do that like 10, 20 or 30 times, I think that you're going to find, you're going to find something there. And over the next couple of months, I can't think of a better thing for you to do given that everything has to be done digitally. And my yeah. goodness, imagine if like five to seven of those actually pop and work, you're going to get your work in front of so many more people. And that's way more important than whether you're giving them a gift card, you know, and right. all that stuff we're talking about. Yeah. It's just more of like that you, you need to get people in here in the funnel. Don't worry about like the website and that we've done all that stuff for you with the tactical, just follow the tactical, but get it to more different places where, where it's like, take what we're giving you, like the giveaway and get like 10 lines in the water, you know, Pat, let me kick that over to you. Yeah, no, I agree with all the advice you gave there. I mean, I think, getting bogged down and making like a page on the website and making it look all the way that you want it to do and perfect with the experience page is probably not a high ROI activity. Although I could see myself getting stuck in that seriously. Like me, my personality is the same way. Like, Oh, I'm going to build this killer lovely web page and you know, better, better spent finding people that have attention and trying to trying to leverage it. So I think, I think you're on the right path. And I think, you know, if you're selling well offline and this, this needs to be said a ton because it's, it's just not the, 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 the normal understanding and it's really hard right like you've been an artist for a long time you've sold well offline um for years and years right and, and making a good income and then all of a sudden you're like okay i'm going to get online and you get into it with the perspective like i've been at this for years uh it's not going to be that big of a deal i'm going to have a ton of attention that's going to come in and the internet doesn't care the internet doesn't care the internet doesn't care that you've cut your teeth, right? That you've been around the block, you know, that, that you've got street smarts and all the rest. It just doesn't care. You're starting from scratch in the online capacity, which is why you've got to get it going and, and uh, get it going early in your career. And we, like we recommend it so much. Like if you can get offline working, ride that for as hard as you can. But we all need online too. And it, you have to have the perspective of how much time it takes to get there. So if you've only been at it for a little bit, Three to five years is really like where it starts picking up steam and where you start truly getting sales. And the, the, the most important hurdle you're already over, you know people are willing to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for your work. So all you got to do is just keep plugging away. And it's a, you know, a, a lame cliche thing to say, like, yeah, keep playing away. Good luck, buddy. You're on the, you're on the right path. Like, <laughs> I hate that advice, but it's so true, right? Like, you know, you, it, it, it is literally about 
following our advice and doing so consistently, the Facebook fans build, the Instagram fans build, uh, the email subscribers build. You start emailing them more. You start emailing them more. The email list grows. You have a sale. A lot of people don't buy what they thought about you. And then the fourth quarter comes around. And then your first year online, you've done 2,500 or 3,500 or 4,500. You know, that's not great relative to what you're doing at your gallery, but at least you're keeping 100% of it. And then year two resets. And then you're doing all the same thing again. And the only thing that matters is consistency and not wasting your stuff on stupid frivolous time or stupid frivolous things, right? And we'll do our best. To, to keep you from stepping on those landmines again i step on them all the time like why am i wasting my time on this after the fact right but if you, as long as you do that and have the perspective like it's just going to take some time you're going you have you have to grind it out but you've already passed the test your art already sells and now it's just about finding these people in a digital capacity so that's yeah I and i think like vincent this is a perfect example of like why these workshops are so valuable i think like why i want to be here with you is because you know you people will spend like years like, you know, doing the wrong things and, and not focusing on like the right things. And I think that you can dramatically speed up your time by, by like, just knowing like, okay, like my time should be spent. Like, like literally you think about it today, you could contact easily. You could direct message like 15 of these people. Right. Yeah. I mean, you said you did it yesterday, right? You yeah. started doing it. And so you could, you could just keep finding more and more and more. It doesn't matter how many you do. Some of them won't respond, you know, but, but that, that is where the ROI is for you, right? It's, it's, it's not in tinkering on, on a lot of stuff on the website. It's more about getting out there and, and getting lines in the water wherever you can. Should I, should I ask them to create a link to my Instagram or to my website? I think that the whole thing is in the tactical. Um, it's like you, uh, you create the giveaway page and then you have them share that page. So they drive it right to the page on your website. Well, what I was talking about is they would create the uh, uh, giveaway for their audience, the, uh, the people on Instagram, uh, unless I misunderstood what Patrick was saying uh, the other day. No, I think they, they create, yeah, if, if you follow the playbook, it'll be in there. Like, so, you know, it'll, it'll probably be easier just to look at that than for us to go over it like step yeah. by step. But, but the basic gist is they will, it's, 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 it's exactly like the way that you promote your own giveaway. It's just that they're going to like practically just take the exact text and just do it on their page. Right. But okay. they need to go somewhere. So they'll click somewhere. They'll go to your site, which will have the giveaway page and it'll just mimic the language that they just saw. It's just that the opt-in is right there, you know? Oh, I see. I, I did misunderstand it then. Okay. Yeah. So you're kind of creating giveaways for each of these people, but it's essentially like they're just sharing it on their page or Instagram feed rather than you on your own. But the, the game is still the same. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Cool. Oh, sorry. Good question. And I'm going to mute you. Thank you. Um, what I would say is that there's no question that we need like a full tactical playbook on the new Instagram and group strategy. I have a couple of case studies in the water right now, taking them all the way through to execution. I don't think we need to wait for those to finish. It's a pretty easy thing to do. As I said, I've detailed the tactical pretty in depth in the videos on exactly how to do that. And again, that's in the show notes, so you can watch that. But I do believe like this is probably the, the biggest opportunity, whether you're just getting started or even if you have Steam, uh, because you're leveraging these people that already have huge communities. You don't have to do that building yourself, which is the hardest part of the whole thing. So. I think I totally agree with you too. We'll, we'll, we'll right just now. do we'll just do a, a private workshop on it, and I'll give away the whole entire farm of everything. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit work in process. I have a couple of people on the platform that we're going through this literally right now. Like I could show you Instagram messages from this morning, um, where we're where we're getting into it and going to test it, and we're going to continue to test it. But I don't believe that there is an, there is a more effective strategy. It's absolutely highly creative. It's not something that anyone else uh, is talking about, at least in the art world that I'm aware of. So I think. I think there's a tremendous opportunity to give it a go. So that's what I would say on that. Um, and then let's just keep it moving because we, we, we got a bunch of questions. Greg, um, you're next. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you if you're still there, Greg. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Go ahead. Hey, Greg. All right. Yeah, sorry. I didn't have my mic in earlier. Um, no problem. So my question is on, on this. It doesn't seem to, like I'm able to get people to my uh, product buying page enough. A little bit ago, I went and put my made my best sellers my home page, and left a whole bunch of them on there. So and added more to them, you know. And I hope so. Increasing that. Uh, PF-fineartprints.com. 
Pat, let me know if you're going to be able to sh share that and pull it up. What's the address again? PF. PF. Fineartprints.com. I'm looking at it on my end here already. Yeah. So Greg, so just to recap, right? Cause we were talking in the small wins group. You have, you been running this lead capture that I see here the whole time. Absolutely. Awesome. The it's only time I turn that, I love your logo. Yeah. The only time I turn that off is, uh, is, um, when I'm running my flash sales and stuff. Did you just recently change this, this homepage to what it is now? Uh, in, in regards to what? Well, in regards to the fact that it's, it's, you've got all the images on there. Um, no, it's, been, it's been that way for probably at least three weeks. Okay. Most good. of my last giveaway. Yeah. So before that, it was, uh, it was, you had like bestsellers, you had categories going. Mm -hmm. Pat, can we show this on your end? This is important for people to see. Yeah, I'm getting it up now. I've got it. Okay. You guys seen it? Uh, we're seeing your other screen with Slack on it. Yep. Sorry. So it, it was just, it's, baff, it's baffling to me because I get a lot of interest when I, I, I did about $150 ad spend on the last giveaway. I get a lot of response. I collected about another 200 emails. Nice. And, yeah, you're uh, killing it on the emails. I mean, like everything sounds great there. And it, to me, it's like they obviously have interest in winning these prints or they wouldn't sign up, you know, but I, I can't get them to click into the product pages for some reason. I've never had an ad to cart. Now, in all fairness, I've only been doing this for a little over two months now. So I understand the long game too. Yeah. So that's probably, that probably explains like the add to carts in the short term. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, but the, 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 the fact that, I mean, you know, you know what I might do? I, I, this is interesting. I have fixed this problem many a times for people um the, the the product buying page problem and i want to say that you know the, the the change that you made three weeks ago um and pat if you can go back to his home page really fast yeah i'm on it like you can do it, do it in a new tab yeah so so what greg had here was he had a like you had how many categories did you have on this page like folders uh what rollover shop art up there i think it's like seven categories okay. six or seven categories okay and now it it this is everything you've got on the home page is that right not everything is on the home page oh but, interesting uh, yeah interesting. i just what i did is made best sellers my home page and added a bunch more images to it so there was more there but that's not by any stretch of the imagination, all my images, no. How many images do you have? Um, Roughly. I'm going to I'm gonna have to guess it's probably getting close to 100 now. Okay. I would throw, what, like, one of our best practices is approximately, if you have 100 images or less, put them all on the homepage. And mm -hmm. just rank them in order according to bestsellers or popularity or whatever the best you can do in regards to that. And that's yeah. the change that that's the change that I would make. I would also go with a three column layout and, and I'm doing that on a hunch because, um, I am wondering if the reason why they are not clicking through or one reason I have, as I said a second ago, I've solved this problem many a times. And usually it's because people are over categorizing right and and it's and you don't have enough images and so it's you've solved that problem but for other people that are listening if you don't if you have less than 100 images the problem that happens is you're forcing people to click on a category and then see like five images that you have in there or seven and then they got to go back and then they got to go click on the next one and and so forth and if you actually go through that process yourself and you, especially if you do it on a phone you're going to quickly realize that it takes you a very long time to just view a hundred images, whereby sure. if you just put them all on the homepage, you can look at them all and scroll with almost no clicks and no page. Like you're saving like 10 page loads or more, you know? So you did the right thing there. And that is usually the fix. Now, the only thing that struck me when I saw that was, um, first of all, you just made this change three weeks ago. So I, it's hard to tell what's happened since then, but, 
but the part that the, the the part that I'm concerned with is that the image is so big on my screen that I it's almost like I don't have to go and look at it further, you know. Um, and in that sense, you may be better off with a three column page so that you're actually getting them to the buying page because part of okay. the psychology of the buying page um, is that the media type, the first media type, it's your cheapest media type. Um, it's the lowest cost print, lowest size. By default, it loads with a price so that it's like, before they even said, I'm shopping, it's like, well, you, you are shop, you're in a store now. You know, this is actually a gallery, a store where you can buy things, right? So th that just happens on the fly for you. And so we want them to click through. I've never been in this situation before where I've seen a two column page with this problem, but that's what I think the next move is. Okay. I, I just had read something on uh, small wins. You know, I follow it a lot and just see what other people have to say and what they're going through. Somebody recommended that they put it to two column because the images were so small on mobile devices, they couldn't see them. So that's I why I went that, back I, to two column. Yeah. I don't even know what that means or, or who said that because the images are all the same on a mobile because they yeah, have they to kind of go in a, they, size to the size they of the kind of go into a single column, don't they? Yeah, they, exactly. They have to go into a single column. So it's all the same for everybody. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know what that person saw. They might have had, you know, sometimes people, um, depending on like what sorts of widgets and whatnot they add to their site, sometimes a third party widget can mess with the mobile. And usually we have to help them get that fixed. And it will, sure. it'll like, it'll be something that's meant for like a desktop, not a mobile. And it'll stretch the mobile screen thinking that it's a desktop. And as a result, the images are really small. Sure. Um, but it's, yeah, you, that's not a concern. That's not a concern. So <laughs> if, if I just switch this thing to a three column and add a whole bunch that are in the other categories already onto the best buying page, then that might solve what you're talking about here. I believe, I, I believe we, that's the next step that we need to do because the fact that you are, you're following the best practices on the lead capture, people are signing up like crazy. It's a very, very good sign right? Yeah. Technically they're seeing your images, but they're not necessarily, you know, being confronted with all the options and the ability to, to shop for it because I think it's because the images are big. Maybe they're, they're not doing that. We, we need to make sure that that's not the problem. Yeah. Okay. Tell me, tell me though, I really do want to know three weeks ago, you made that change and then you ran a giveaway after that. Yeah. I can't remember whether I changed it before I did the giveaway or mid giveaway or what, but it's been, let's look different. at what happens after the next one. I'd almost even say like, whenever you decide to do that, Greg, yeah. notate the date that you did it. Okay. And okay. because we need to look at, you're going to want to look, especially at the day after that day and look at the lead capture performance versus before. It's always okay. good to actually do this, like have your own like marketing calendar or like, sorry, I should say journal of change like log or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. It change log. That's what we do. Um, we've got one for, we've got one for everything in our, in our company practically. But uh, yeah, that way you can, you can look at the before and after and, and then you'll know. Okay. So I've got like, uh, I started this thing with a, a brand new Facebook page and no Facebook following two months ago. I now have 250, 260 some Facebook likes. And uh, whenever I don't do a giveaway and I'm, and I, I have like a hundred and some followers on Instagram too, but whenever I don't do a giveaway and just do the social posts, the, the website traffic just drops to nothing. So yeah, the giveaways have been good, but yeah, uh, and I, I know it's a game that when I do a when I do a giveaway, I, I usually end up with you know over a thousand page views in a month. So yeah, and 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 so the the romancing types of posts are more like, I mean, it's not it's good if people are coming back to your site, but it's more like giving them value while they are on platform, you know, sure. um, whichever platform that they're on. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. But what I would say is, again, you, you are a perfect candidate. I mean, everybody's a candidate for this. For everybody that's listening, everybody is a candidate for this. But, but Greg, you are definitely a candidate for somebody who should be contacting these other groups and Instagram uh, influencers and using that tactic 
because you're already getting success, you know, on these giveaways. Um, and uh, that's what that's where I would probably be spending more time. That's where you're going to get more traffic. And the great part about that, the part that I really like about this, especially, is um, when you're running giveaways with other like you could be running three giveaways next week with like three influencers and your, your people, like your regular followers and people that are on your email list won't even know that you're doing it. You know, I mean, maybe there's a little yeah. bit of crossover um, or cross pollination that some of those people follow happen to be in that group. I doubt that'll ever happen, but who cares? It doesn't matter anyway. Right. But right. you can actually be running successive, like these are marketing tactics, right? These are just, these are marketing initiatives um, in other places while, you know, you're not running a giveaway with your regular followers where you've already kind of exhausted that. Right. Right. And you want to okay. let it rest for a, a couple of weeks or a month or whatever. Sure. Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure does. And what That's I would what say I would, is a okay, final too. is like, we're, we're in yeah, a very yeah. interesting time, right? Like, you know, you're just getting this site up. The fact that you're dropping that many emails to me tells me it's working. I would just stay the course right now and not stress about it. I wouldn't even worry about my web traffic or look at it. I'd look at it occasionally and I would say, clearly I have a hack that is getting me emails, that is growing my Facebook page and is growing my Instagram account. Uh, I'm pulling this off without having to, to put money into the Facebook marketplace. So all you need to do is just stay on the gas right now. You'll find that, you know, Step one is figuring out how you can acquire attention like this. You've got that sorted. Step two is marketing to them consistently, marketing them to consistently throughout the year. If you keep those two things up, you are going to be just fine. You've got, you've got nothing to worry about. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Greg, keep us posted on that. I, I want to yeah. know how it goes and what happens because that would be really good information to know if, if uh, that was really kind of the, the thing blocking your funnel. Okay, back. I know you had a question. Uh, you got it. You got you got flower power background. I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. Go ahead. I got I got this guy too. Um, Beck, do you go by Beck or do you go by Becca? What do you want us to call you? Beck's good. Okay. It's uh, there. Yeah, I got a lot of nicknames, um, but Beck works. B K. Um, oh, so first of all, I love the ideas because even though the idea for the drive by. Now it still starts to fuel other ideas, right? Because we have to get creative. So absolutely. Too bad, too bad it doesn't work right now, but I appreciate it because my brain's I really on fire. Think that that's going to have legs in the future. I think that we're onto something. Like in normal times, I'm thinking about that and I'm going, "Wow, that's there's something here for sure." No, it's a great idea, and I shared it with my group, and I shared your video with my group, and so they're all trying to get creative too, and they're like, "We can do virtual. We can do this." So we're starting to chat now. So. So just thanks for that. And it's too bad it doesn't work out. So I, I'm, I'll try and get to, I kind of have two questions, but first I just want to introduce what I've come up with for an idea. Um, I'm not selling prints. And so what I decided to do is I've got five artists on board and my mother's an artist, so I can get plenty of art from her. And I'm going to upload them to my site. Cause you were talking about, we need to find an influencer, somebody who likes our image or our art. But I think during the times right now, we got to, we have a greater ability to have people find what we to, uh, to love what we're doing. So I'm, I'm going to collect high resolution images from artists, load them onto my site. I introduced a couple artists to it. I'm like, look, you can like get it printed on wood. You can get it printed on metal. Like look at all these options, but I want to donate a hundred percent of the profit to help what's going on right now. So I need to find how to have someone manage that. So I'll have them, they don't, it doesn't, artists don't have to donate a painting. It's free to donate a high res and then they can be part of this. And then if the original is av available, I'm going to put the artist's name and contact information in the, in the image description and just be like, you want to support an artist. That's great. Here's their information. You can do the transaction for the, for the original with the artist. So that's something I'm working on, which I think if we're trying to reach influencers and in what's going on right now, if we can give whatever we're giving away is going to be really attractive, I think. Um, should I set up? Um, should I set up two like two categories? Because I'd like to keep my stuff on there, like have Becca Watkins art, and then have a category for contributing artists. I mean, it's going to be less than a hundred pieces of art right now. That's what I would do. Yeah. Okay. 
that's then, a good um, idea. Just do contributing artists and then you could have like, you know, their names, you know, underneath that. Yeah. And then, I mean, that, that could drive traffic to my site. I'll get people to sign up that way. And then when this is over, I'll have some opportunity to have a good email um, collection. And I think what I'll do is say to people who are signing up, like, if you buy a print, I'm going to share your information with the artists that you're buying from so you can have contact with them. Yeah, that's so, nice. Um, so I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to donate 100% of the prints. And if someone buys an original from me, I'm going to donate 20%. And I'm going to mark my prices up like we talked. Nice. So, um, so that's a, I mean, if anybody's doing that, if you're not selling prints and you're sort of okay financially, I think it's a nice thing to do, you know, yeah. we can do it. So I'm working on that. That should come up in the next week. And then the other question I have is I am doing Facebook live tutorials and it's been wonderful traffic over the last week. I've had over 70 yes. shares. I love this. I've had I love it over this. 500, um, uh, 500 views and I, maybe even a couple hundred comments, but I'm not driving traffic to my site. So if I do a live Facebook, um, if I do a live Facebook feed, I'm finding like it's stuck on Facebook. <laughs> you know, I tried to record it on my phone. I wanted to get on my site, get it on YouTube. I'm not sure how to drive traffic to my site. And then the other problem I'm having is I did a live Facebook from my business page. I don't get any, is it the algorithms? Cause nobody's seeing it. But when I do it from my personal page, you know, I've got almost 600 followers. That's it. And you guys said, just do where you have people right now. So that's why I was doing it for my personal page. But now I'm not sure how to get them. I'm not sure how to move people. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So let me take that. So he, here's what I would say. Absolutely leverage your personal page. Like right now, whatever you can do to get okay. the attention, right? So I would say you have to come up with some sort of something, right? Because you want to get their email address. Now on the personal page, it's all your friends and family that are sharing it. But inevitably, some people are going to end up seeing it and be like, oh, my gosh, this is awesome. This gal is awesome. What is she doing? I want to find out more. So I would you can you can you can just do quick and dirty, which is write your email address down on a page and say, yeah. here, email me for more information, for more follow up, whatever, and just hold it up like that. You could do something that simple or you could say I'm giving away a one hour free art lesson and art consultation to enter to win. All you have to do is visit my website and fill out the form. You could do that. And then literally get the piece of paper and just hold it up. And like every 15 minutes, because what happens with these streams is that people get busy. Um, you go long winded, no, not, not like these, by the way, not like these, but you go long winded. <laughs> people are coming on and off, on and off, on and off. And so the key is to remember to constantly be making the ask, right? To constantly be making the ask. So you could do something as simple as that and just experiment and see what works. And that's how I'd start running those right away. Okay. And then the way that I got 500 people on my personal page was I went to a couple artist sites and I just started friending people and I was like, Hey, I'm an artist. You're an artist. Let's get connected. And it's just grown because of that. I mean, it's not a lot of people, but so I don't know. They're 500 not all people friends. is 500 people is a lot of people. It's a good start. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I'm kind of cynical. I'm like, I want more. Yeah, good. Uh, we we okay, like to want more, but 500 is a great number. I mean, like, okay. there's not 500 people on this stream right now. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I like your number. idea of holding up like a consultation, or okay. Yeah, you could. Get yeah, yeah. I wouldn't do a QR code because you know a lot of people are watching on their phone and they're not going to be able to scan yeah. it that way. But like, you know, just old school, right? Like, email me, or you could create, you know, a simple lead capture on your site and say, you know, bet, beckwalkins.com slash whatever, just make it short and sweet so they can remember it. Right. And then hold it up multiple yeah. times during the stream. Okay. And what's really been good and for, and for other people too, is I've been posting my free tutorials on the local Facebook community groups. So we have the local North end group. We have the Boise bench. We have Boise um, South side, West side. So those are Facebook groups that have a lot of people and that's where I've been and it's free. I'm giving back to the community and they love it. And so I'm not selling anything. So I've been getting a following from that. So great. it's been that's helpful. Great work. Great work. That's so easy to join your email list too. You yeah, know? I just got to get them to my website. That's where I'm kind of struggling because I'm like, oh, great. I got a lot of friends now. I don't know them. But... What, I'm, what I'm wondering is like, you know, if your email list like can be the people who are interested in your work and obviously everybody would be interested in your work for the most part, but but all, like almost like a, it's like a, a mix, like your, your regular email marketing would be like, you know, mixing your work and then like these, these classes or techniques or like other things that you're, you're doing. 
And, and then if that's what it is, then, then you can, um, when you're doing your live, that can be your call to action, as they say, or a CTA, right? Mm -hmm. And you can be, um, you can say, hey, if you want to see more of these and you like these, get on my email list. I just put the link in the comments or I'm going to, or my website is this, you know, you got to give them a way to like click on it or link or click on my profile. Um, there's, you know, however you do that. But if you give them an incentive to be on your list, that's obviously it's not financial. It's like, I'm giving stuff away. I'm doing these things all the time to give you, you know, such and such, then, then you'll probably get them to come over. You know, you, at the end of the day, you got to have some sort of a, an incentive or a reason for them to go to your site and to get on your email list. Yeah, you know? yeah. They, they it want doesn't have to be financial, money. right? In some cases it is, some cases it's something else, but. They want more tutorials, you know, so, but I, how do I get those on my site? Do I get this on my site? Yeah. Well, what do you, what are they like PDFs? I'm trying to keep them under, I'm keep, trying to keep them seven to 10 minutes. They're Facebook live. I'm doing Facebook, Facebook live tutorials. And so I'm, I can be a little nutty, you know, so, so people kind of enjoy them. And I'm like, here's how you do this, you know, and I do a little craft that they can do with their kids. And, you know, and then I chat with people and, and I'm trying to keep them about seven minutes. And I have people sending me photos now of like, one woman's like, oh my gosh, my kid hates art. He did this thing you did. It's great. She's like, do more. So that's kind of a hotbed for me, but I do them Facebook live. So I'm like, how should I do YouTube? You know, get them and then link it on my site. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You could, you could do that, but like what you could do is start aggregating these onto a page. Like it could be a YouTube page or it could be a page on your site, you know, like where, where these are. And then the ask is like, Hey, if you love these, I got a whole library of these that I'm building and I'm constantly updating them. And if you join my email list, I'll send it to you, you know? Um, and you could do something like that too. Okay. I just got an idea. Okay. Because I'm getting the traffic from Facebook live. And so that's what's working. So maybe I do more advanced tutorials, like for, for advancing art, like I've got more on my website. So I'll keep doing the live ones because that's working, but then I'll start another series on my website. Right. Like on well, YouTube, on YouTube that you can find on my website. Right. And okay. well, the thing is too, is remember that the ones that are on, on Facebook are ephemeral, like they're short lived. They're going to go away and they go away in a day and a half. Right. So they can't get them anymore. If they're not, yeah, I think they disappear. Pat, don't they disappear in a day and a half? They're not just sitting in her video section, right? Nope, they're there in perpetuity. But if, well, they are. Yeah, if our oh, numbers. Oh, like no. Yeah, <laughs> if our numbers dictate anything, though, like the minute, the minute that the engagement party is over, Facebook doesn't really show them to people. Which is not to say you can't grab them and embed them right into a web page without having to download or do anything. You can. Okay. Um, you can do that all day. Yeah. And then once they're Facebook Live, I find I can't share them. Is that correct? Like they're stuck on Facebook. Unless I record it on my phone. No, you can absolutely share them. You just share it like like you would any other Facebook post. You can email it. You can send whatever. It has a it has a definitive link to it. But not to, like I can't transfer it over to YouTube or I can't transfer it over to you like a market. You can. Yeah. Now we're now we're getting into the hardcore tactical. So yeah, okay, I can. I'll research that. I've been yeah. looking that up. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the problem is is that like if you're doing it with your phone, then. You're kind of yeah. stuck because the video. Goes, we don't even need to get into it. Yeah, you just 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 Google it. Either way, I love it. Um, it you might be you might be expanding your revenue sources as one uh, an art teacher, uh, uh, two the effervescent and kind of wacky with his backgrounds and everything else. Facebook Live teacher. I mean, these are some other opportunities. This is the stuff. Mm -hmm. This is the stuff that happens uh, uh, when you start getting creative. I mean, you do, were not doing this two weeks ago. Now all of a sudden you're posting in all these groups in Boise. You're doing Facebook Lives and you were going to have an art show in the grass. I, I like it. Yeah. I like what you're up to. You're executing. I got one more and idea. You're, get, and you're getting wins. I got one more idea that I'll just share real quick. I'm trying to develop it. And if anybody likes this idea, I want to collaborate with me because I'm still trying to figure it out. But I'd like to do a community art piece somehow, like a virtual. So people, like kids can send me their images. I can collage them on after I print them out. Or I can draw them on and we can create a community piece. So that's something I'm trying to brainstorm on also. Um, it's just kind of time to give things away right now. It's difficult times. So um yeah so this is this is right up my alley i'm a nurse if i can take care of people and give things away i'm thrilled that's why I'm my winning. business is doing great <laughs> winning winning on all levels though yeah uh, uh, otherwise I'm much better at this than giving things away <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh okay well thank you i'll keep uh going and um yeah
I've got a couple on uh, Facebook that I want to deal with um, really quickly. This one is an interesting one that comes up a bunch, and it's from uh, her name is Lisa Lamoureux, and I've got to mute you. Sorry, like hold on. Okay, that did it. And the question is, I have about a thousand email addresses, okay, in various forms in a big box, like guest books, business cards, raffle giveaway entries, uh, that I could add to a spreadsheet manually, but some are old, like 10 years old, and some are newer, like the last few years. Uh, should I add all of these to my ASF contact list? I don't want to be spammy uh, when I haven't had contact with some of these people for so long. I yes. do have a lot of time, though, uh, suddenly with show cancellations. Exactly. So yes, add it to your contact yes, list. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Two. Get them in there. Don't even think about it. Get them in there. Two, you know, you can, you, there's, there's so many different ways you can approach this, but one, you can just send them an email and say, hey, I know you haven't heard from me and it's been a while. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to actively market my art. If this is something you wanna be on, just hit a quick reply uh, and, and you could do it that way, right? And if they reply, keep them on the list. If they don't, you can email them again and you could do something like that. What I like even more is you take that whole list, you put it up to Facebook, you create an audience. We have an in-depth tutorial on this that makes it really easy. And Facebook will match as many of those emails as it can to Facebook accounts. And then you can sh spend 10 bucks, show them an ad, warm them up, then send them the email. And you could also just send the email and don't even worry if they haven't heard from you in 10 years uh, and just see how it goes. But absolutely get it all up, especially when you just get going digitally. Anything that you have in the garage, in the closet, old contacts, old addresses, any of it, um, you got to put that in there. And Taylor, will you put in the show notes the complete Facebook ads tutorial uh, link that we have? It has in-depth videos on how to do every step of what I'm just talking about, and, and you can just go and look at the videos, and, it, and it's and it's pretty easy to ship. So that's a good question. Um, Bob had a question about, you know, do, doing 25% gross sales uh, donated in org like the Red Cross uh, or, or anything of that measure. Absolutely, I think you know those are those are just fantastic things to do. And as long as you do it and you're not you know cheesy or spammy about it, I think it can come off like really really well. Um, yeah, and I think that's something that you can take advantage of here with this print discount right? Like that we're talking about, like that might be, you know, a sensitive type of way of communicating a, a, a sale, you know, over, over the next two weeks specifically. Like if you want to run a sale and try to drum up some business, like, you know, that's probably a good way to do it. I've got another question from uh, Trine Churchill. It says, I have sold completely at random to a Hollywood celebrity who contacted me on Instagram uh, she then came to my studio and bought two small pieces. I had been pondering how to get a shout out from her. She has millions of followers, uh, but also want to be very respectful about her life as a private individual. Any suggestions about offering a free print to her to share with her followers? Uh, her followers are are more into her personality fashion, uh, but boy, would you love to get on that list. You better believe you would. Um, this is sort of an interesting scenario, right? Because you have to approach the Hollywood uh, celeb very, very carefully. Um, and I think... The best thing that you can do is have them do it organically on their own. And the best way you can do that is by providing them a ton of value. We've got um, a couple other customers uh, that, have, that have told us like, hey, um, you know, what about, what about this celebrity or that celebrity? I've had a celebrity that's bought this. Like, what's the best way to approach it? And I would say high touch, white glove, four season service. If you see them liking their Instagram, your Instagram posts, uh, you know, and throwing a like on there or, or, or throw in a comment, you know, like a bunch of their Instagram posts, throw them some comments back. You can send them some DMs and say, Hey, working on some brand new stuff. Want a sneak peek? If they say yes and they respond, send them the sneak peek stuff back. I've talked about, um, a bunch about this, this art show playbook that we worked up, uh, on a show that we just did for Matthew Laka. And, you know, I can, I can even share my screen and pulled it up because I saw your comment earlier. Let's see if this is going to work. All right, you guys looking at my screen? Yeah. So Matthew made an individual YouTube video, okay? And he has some big, big wig, you know, big muckety muck celebrities on his, but he made an individual, so you can see this. Hello, Edwin. Really... I hope you're doing well. And by the way, this is exactly what you can do on an experience page since yeah. that was brought up earlier. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. So this is a, a personalized video to this collector named Irwin, and let's just say Irwin is famous. Uh, I don't know any famous Irwins, but this is the one that's Irwin. And to show you, he held the cell phone up, made a personal video on a personal page. You can just, you could drop, you know, here's the, here's the logo for his show. All of this is like two seconds on the experience pages. Dropped a YouTube video on it and a little preview button. 
and send it to their Instagram DM to that celebrity. And by the way, it doesn't need to be a celebrity. This can be this could be like anybody. And this is just like one of these fantastic uses uh, why we wanted to get these experience pages in the water to be able to build them quickly. But if I have any collector that's of any value to me that continues to buy pieces uh, over the years, I am going to put something like this in the water so quickly uh, because what a fantastic way uh, to be able to you know, show them, show them you understand how important they are to your business and make them feel special and give them the VIP treatment. Like embed a private video and even if you don't want to do it this way, this was more for a show playbook, which is a little bit differently, but you could have done it just as easily uh, by sending them a private video to their Instagram DM. So I just think high touch and being caring and catering to them is the best way to do that. And you can do that with, you know, any collector you have that's bought a number of pieces, or if you feel like you have a high net worth individual, they just want to be catered to and taken care of, right? It's 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 pretty simple in that in that capacity. That's, so that's what I would say um, to that comment. But guys on the chat, um, anyone else want to raise a hand? Uh, if you're on video, I can see you raise your hand. Otherwise, okay. Oh yeah, Steven's in line, and then Debbie will get you next. All right, all right Steven, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead. Okay, I'm working on uh, the strategy we discussed before, and um in terms of holding uh, the uh, giveaway, but with uh, the survey. Um, and uh, also what interests me is that uh, the Instagram uh, influencers and the uh, and Facebook, I really think you have something going there. The thing is, like I said before, I don't have the words. I don't have the, the copy. And I think you mentioned that you would, have some notes or something yeah, they're, and they're on the show notes i saw them with my own eyes like two days ago okay so, so that's there. last tuesday's that's last tuesday show was it last was it last tuesday because you did tear downs on friday yeah yeah it must have been last tuesday yeah um i saw in in the zoom chat here that taylor or chris i, I forget who it was somebody put the link in here uh so i'm just suggesting also i mean if you could, if we could marry that with like a many chat, um, like how you did the 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 um, that video on how to run a, uh, a giveaway using many chat, that was excellent. I mean, everything down to the copy was there. You had to follow the script. I mean, if that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. We started a we started a playbook today for this whole tactic of contacting these and you know these people and running this, um, and that's what. Pat was just mentioning earlier, we're going to do like it's, it, it's, it's started. So it's, it's there now. So at least you can start following that, but we're going to start like really investing and building into it like immediately. And he mentioned that, you know, in the next couple of days, maybe we'll do it on Friday if we can pull it together, uh -huh. but we're going to do like a full workshop on it, like a full blown workshop, just because we want you guys to start doing it faster. Um, okay. The, the current time. But yeah, we're with you 100%. We, we are thinking the exact same way. We want to have the full step-by-step -step tactical on it. So you'll have that, uh, you'll have a similar thing to that many chat thing. Um, yeah. In the next yeah. couple of them. Hopefully, yeah. yes. I mean, it, it may, depending on how, how hard each of the things are, we're going to keep, we're going to keep going until everything, every part of it's done. And um, to, to see your progress, uh, which part of the website do I look at? I just go to the support vault and uh, find it and find it there or just well, the small wins. If you go to the show notes for this se session, um, so do you see the chat? Are, are you on a phone right now or are you on a computer? I'm on an iPad and I'm seeing the whole. Do you see the chat? Uh, yes. Okay. So do you see that link right there? On top right. On top right yeah. Okay, at the very bottom, Taylor just put a link right there. He linked right to it for you. So it, okay, uh, send. It says oh, today's see. show notes and past show notes. Oh, okay. Um, and okay, so when this is done, can, how do I get access? Uh, well, it's it's it, it, it's actually already there. Like with the way that we've approached it, that playbook is we've kind of written it out. So you know exactly what to do, but we're going to fill it in with like detailed like videos and things like that. But the steps are there, right? It's just not like, you know, every single like, uh, like in-depth tutorial is done yet because it's brand new. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I would try to click on it and um, it goes to Safari and I don't have the username and password. Oh yeah, yeah. So you'll have to do it on a computer that it works with. But what what's happening is at the after these sessions, I, I believe all of the stuff is getting emailed out to everybody. Oh, okay. okay. And so that'll take you to the show notes of this show today, and uh, we'll make we'll make sure it gets to you. In fact, I know that Emily and her team are putting these in small wins, like they're doing the show notes in small wins as well, or at least linking okay. to it. So you All should right. do a post. Uh, maybe Emily could say, Emily, how quickly, how quickly do you um, do you guys get like a link to that in the in the group? Is it like end of day today? Is it like tomorrow? You're unmuted, Emily. You can go. Thanks, Pat. Um, usually by end of day, but at the latest, early tomorrow morning. We'll get that up for you guys. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, one more, one more thing about it. Um, um, I'm doing. Uh, a time lapse video. I've, I've already had them vote on which image. So I'm taking the image that was most popular, right? And I'm doing a, a time lapse uh, video. I'm already done one of the drawing itself, and I'm going to start one of the painting. After that, and I'm finished with it, um, I'm going to offer it in a giveaway. The only thing is, is the is the turnaround. Um, I need to get a proof of it before I, you know, release it and all that uh, rigor rigmarole. You got any thoughts on that, how to streamline that? So tell me about what you mean, you gotta get it to, to get scanned or shot? Or yeah. Something. You gotta see a print, where are you getting that done? Um, there's a place nearby my, my house called Art Printers and I just have them do the uh, proof and the scan so that I have it in. Uh, otherwise I'd have to shoot it and there's problems with that. You know, I want it a, as perfect an image as I can. Yeah, it's worth it. So, so what's the, what are you looking to streamline? Um, well, if I do a giveaway, how, how long is a reasonable time for delivery to, to, our, uh, to the winner? Oh, um, I mean, I, I don't think anybody, you know, I think especially given the circumstances, like mm -hmm. it, it, there's, there's really no, I mean, you're Don't giving worry away. About it. Yeah, I think so. Especially, especially if you say it up front, like you know, you might say uh, on the giveaway, like, "Hey, whoever wins, you know, given the circumstances, it might take a little longer than usual. The usual time is two to three weeks or whatever, right?" You just or say, personalized oh. email to the person saying, "Okay, I'm I'm scanning it in and I'm I'm doing, making sure the print's perfect, and I'll be sending it out to you." and sent like that right yeah and you might you might even put it on the giveaway language like at the very bottom like like okay you know what i mean like not not what you put on facebook but like maybe on the page it's just like a you know hey guys like this is what's gonna you know what i mean like what happens after this is i'm gonna go get make a proof and just i'm gonna check it out myself and make sure it's perfect and the whole process can take like three to six six weeks it might be on the latter the the latter end of that because of the pandemic but you're going to love it and I'm going to make sure you love it, you know, done. Okay. Next time you guys are doing teardowns, which is probably next week, right? Um, I've done the changes. I've put, uh, I've got less than 50 pieces. So I'm putting them all on my landing page and I've redone the, the, the lead uh, capture tool. So maybe by that time you guys could take a look at that on the teardown. Sure. Yeah, and we'll do it. And if it's not on a teardown session, we'll do it on the next workshop, like with you. Okay. So. Just tell us when you're ready. Okay, so that gives me uh, um, more things to do if on was, my list. If it was ready today, I would say let's do it right now, but let's do it when you're ready. Well, I mean, I have it. I just I just want to give other people opportunity. Uh, okay. You've given me an, uh, enough to chew on right now. Well, let's, let's, let's hang, let, let, we might, uh, it might be better to do it next time. Um, yeah. But let's see if there's okay. nobody else comes on, we can do it at the end of this. Okay. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. All right. Hi, y'all. I'm. Uh, I live in Morgan Hill, California, Silicon Valley, where the first uh, Santa Clara County was the first to get shut down. So it's been quite oh, the adventure. Dear. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I'm in lockdown, but I'm still making it work. <laughs> nice. Great. 
Anyway, I'm, I'm not an artist. I've been in business for over 25 years. This year celebrates my 25th year. I've done over 3,000 shows around the country. I have 5,000 people on my email list. I have 10,000 people on my snail mail list. I still send out postcards. I'm going to actually send out 200 this week. Um, I would. I don't know what a teardown is. Unfortunately, I didn't get these emails that you guys started this. Um, it, it ended up in spam, but I just found them. Thank you, Emily. It's so good to see your cute face. <laughs> you guys are awesome, by the way. I just love you. And um, what I, I I don't know what a teardown is, but I, what I can't it's just figure audit. out is it's just a website audit. Yeah, that's okay. I've had that. And I'm getting a lot of people to my site. I'm doing all kinds I'm of stuff. I'm selling. Have, huh? you had, have you had one from me? Have I had? You have, 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 have one from you, dude. Have you had one from me and from Patrick. I, Different story. Yes. Story. Okay, good. That's the one I want because here's the thing: I'm selling on Facebook Live. I'm do. I have a YouTube channel. I have a million followers on my blog. I have. I'm doing live videos. I went live last night and painted live. I'm so creative. I have so much, I have stories behind my art. I have a million and five art products that can be made. I have originals. I have everything, right? So and my you've got question, the personality too. Huh? I said, and you have the personality and the energy too. That's for sure. Yeah, I do. Um, so here's the thing. Um, I, I don't know what, why, like I will sell, like you can look at my stats, right? You guys can see the back end. And now I don't send emails out through MailChimp because I have a constant contact and, and, and you guys are, if that's a platform you're not doing. So I keep, I have my emails go to email brain, uh, not email brain, um, MailChimp. And then I transport them to my email list on uh, constant contact. So that's, so you don't know how many emails I'm sending out, but I'm sending a lot. And I'm doing Facebook and Instagram and blah, 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 LinkedIn, everything, right? My thing is, is that I'm selling only like when I have a sale on my Facebook page. And by the way, I'm doing a survey right now. I'm even doing surveys. I've done surveys for 25 years, right? And the surveys are very enlightening because here's the thing. I don't want to guess what people need and want right now. No way. And I will be happy to share my questions with you guys to give you like food for thought on what kind of questions you can ask. So I'm doing a survey and a giveaway on that with my email line. And I'm doing a Facebook contest on my Facebook line. And these are big, beautiful pieces of art I'm giving away for free, right? And I'm getting a lot of engagement. So there's my story. I don't know why I can't sell without, whether it's coronavirus time or whatever, I sell when I do a sale. So. I I don't know what the problem is with my site. <laughs> I don't think I don't think there's any problem. I mean, I just I mean I think that you know I'm gonna look at your stats and and I'm gonna I'm gonna let Pat Pat talk about it. My, but but like you know sales work. They just work, right? And no, no. Hey, I've sold over two million dollars worth of my art. I'm yeah. not trying to brag, but I've sold my work so that you're not I've owned my own gallery for 13 years you're talking to a girl who has been featured at the Wynn Hotel on TV magazines and I'm not trying to brag I'm just telling you I I would love for you to look at my website because I'm trying to debug this and I don't want to do I don't want to do shows anymore I already didn't want to you know I'm tired of them I'm gonna be 60 in July and it's a lot of work and I and I want to build a a better platform online. So there you go. Matt, go <laughs> I'll ahead. Stop and talking now. <laughs> totally, totally believable story. All Oops, the way I up, lost all, you guys. All the way up to that uh, 60, 60 part. Look, Are look, you there? You look like you're 43. Sorry, oh, shoot. Um, yeah, okay. So I heard all that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank one, you. One, oh, okay. one, in terms okay. of um, the sales, in terms of the sales, um, yeah, you you just explained the uh, the burden of every single solitary e-commerce entrepreneur operating in the greater United States, let alone everywhere else. Like, the expectation has just come for sales, and so one one way to approach it, and let's just say, okay, so you only sell during sales, uh, and you would rather sell at full price. Raise everything in your store right now. Raise all the prices, a hundred percent of them, and then when you're in a sale, go down to the prices now where you actually want to be and see what happens. Easy thing to reverse, just 
raise so, them all to a hundred percent. What? So let's say I want say, you to look at my site first. Yeah, for sure. But let's say you're selling something for a hundred dollars and you want to sell it for a hundred dollars and then you do a sale and it's down to sixty dollars, right? Well, yeah. well, raise it to 150 and then the sale price will be $100. It's one thing you can do. It's, it's a worthwhile thing to try. And you could try it on a few well, items. The, 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 thing, the thing that's important to ask, though, is are you not happy with the sale price or are you just not happy with the lack of consistency? I'm not happy with the lack of consistency. And here's the thing. I don't care about the money. I mean, I do care about the money. But but it's it's more of like i'm in a tricky place in my career right my originals were selling for 10,000 and beyond right but it's what i have found i'm just going to be very transparent with y'all <laughs> what i have found is that there's a special number that i have found with my collectors that they're willing to spend about 2200 to 2800 on a, on an original so i i am a girl who's willing to do whatever and i don't mean that in a prostitute these sort of way as an artist so please don't get me wrong but it's like i have had so much experience in my life that here's the thing i i do this full time right and so whatever it takes to service my collectors within my own integrity is what i want to do so if lowering my prices right now i mean i'm 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 doing a survey and right now what people want is original paintings from me they want a print sale, they want my gift items, and they want a virtual art and wine night. So I'm gonna be doing that, <laughs> all of it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I would say like, given given where you're at and the fact that you're bigger, it's, it's harder to give blanket advice. We would be ill-advised to give blanket advice without like digging into the stats and like seriously taking a look. And I, and I think that advice would probably be way more targeted and way more um, practical. Uh, but I think, you know, you have the entire range of products and you're just concerned. Yeah, you're, even t-shirts. Yeah, even t-shirts. And you're just concerned about the consistency. That's, that's sort of interesting. I would, yeah, and jewelry too. Yeah, I, I would need to, I would just need to dig into your stats and, and take a look okay. at everything and see what's coming. I in would love that. Feel way more comfortable than, than, you know, trying to offer blanket advice otherwise. But I, you have I would love that. that. And, and huge, huge congrats on everything. Huge congrats. Thank you. Thank you. And if I can help any of you guys in any way, if you want me to send you my survey questions, I know a couple people have asked me privately. Surveys are the key to stats. And that is something that I have applied through my whole life. And it's not a matter of selling myself out, but it's like you can sit here and, you, you know, who knows? Maybe people want hand painted jeans for me, which I used to do 20 years ago. That was in the survey. Very few people want that. So I don't want to guess right now. I don't have time, you know? So whatever I can do to help y'all. Yeah, awesome. Debbie, I'm looking at your stats right now. Um, and uh, I don't, it's, it'll be hard for me to just pass this over to Pat to get him, have him look at the screen. But, but what I see is, and I'm looking at the period of like August 1st, 2019 through the end of the year, just to make sure okay. that we're not in the pandemic zone yeah, right great great and what i see i'm on the conversion doctor report okay okay and the majority of your traffic is um is is converting at a at a, at a lower rate on the contact right. conversion rate on the contact yeah. conversion rate right oh. that's, so that's the first step in the funnel that's the first sign that um it can mean only one of two things. Number one, you are not running the lead counsel tool um, according to best practices, or okay. the quality of the traffic is low. Or lower, lower, lower. Not because what we say is that number should be a minimum of five percent. And it I'd like to see it more at like seven, eight, or nine percent, especially when you're talking about direct traffic which you have, the majority of your traffic is direct. You've got a decent amount of Google organic and some Facebook traffic during that time. But, um, but yeah, so let's talk about the lead capture first. Okay, it's okay. here. It's here. I, I see it now. Yeah. Um, so you've got it. Have you been running that the first time? I mean, sorry, the whole time? Whole time. Cool. Okay. So The only time I take it off is when I do a sale because I think that you have to do that. I think it's... Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So, so what is to give you an idea, like a lot of our other customers on just like direct traffic, they might have 
10 to 12% conversion rates on that lead capture. Okay. Okay. And okay. Only, all that means, it doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong, like on your site. It just means that the quality of the traffic that they've managed to bring in is just more interested in buying from them than, than, than yours is when you're at a 3%. Okay. Wah, wah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so that, that's, that's not, this is all, this is all good. This is yeah, all, okay, good. all good because you need to know, you need to know what you're dealing with. And so if I'm, if I look at, okay, so, um, roughly if I, if I look at like your top five here, I'm going to add it up. There's like 2,300 visits for direct 700 from Google. That's about 3000 plus like, plus probably another like 600. So 3,600 in August through December. So August, Horrible. September, October, November, December, five months. So what is that? Five times. It's, it's terrible. Roughly, <laughs> yeah. It's, so it's roughly like 500 visits a month. Not right? enough. If I'm calculating, am I calculating that? No, no, no. Wait, I'm sorry. 800 visits a month. Okay. Five months would be about that. And that's during the busiest time of the year too, right? Yeah. So do you know what that tells me? What? The way to grow your business is you need to get more leads, more emails, more traffic. 100%. Right. And you, the best part is like, I did a presentation on this, um, or I, I don't know at this point, whether it was a presentation or a rant, I, I, sometimes I'm feeling academic and sometimes I'm just kind of <laughs> just TO'd about something. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, I did, I did, a uh, something on that, that was called, um, it's the number one metric. It was a presentation because it's that important. It, and Taylor, let's make sure that that's in the show notes on here. Oh, please. Um, yes. Yeah. And basically every, you know, I, I'm get, I, I got a little academic on that because I felt like I needed to in helping this whole art storefronts community. Okay. And okay. what I wanted, the, this, this is really good for everybody to, to hear. What I want to pass along to everybody as an entrepreneur. Okay. When you're a business owner is that there are specific metrics that drive your business. Okay. It doesn't matter what business you're in. I've done this with many separate businesses. Okay. There, there, if, if, and you can boil everything down to these metrics. Okay. And if you focus on these metrics and you understand them, you literally are like operating the machine of your business with levers. They're all levers. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we've got different metrics for the art storefronts business, right? We're measuring customer satisfaction rates, right? And that's, mm -hmm. that's a lever. That's an important, mm -hmm. we're measuring all these things. And, uh, you know, I could give examples of things that we measure in my other companies, but for you guys, I wanted in that presentation to, to do that. I did it for you. I did all the analysis. I thought of the whole thing and I wanted to make it really simple for everybody. And that's why I came down to the number one metric, which is just literally collecting leads, right? Email addresses. Okay. And I said in that presentation, like you need qualified leads, but if you guys focus on leads and don't get into the weeds on that, you're going to have a percentage of those are going to be qualified leads. It just, yeah. if, if you get a hundred leads, at an art show, you know, maybe 70% of qualified leads. It doesn't matter. Just get the 100. You added yeah. 70, and I'm really happy that you did that, you know? And so, yeah. so I, this metric of getting is the biggest problem, and it's what people are not focusing on enough, you mm. know? And especially in your case, you have history. You have a, you know, clearly traction, successful business. You've been doing this for a long time. And so all you need to do is focus on eyeballs. That's it. Okay. You know? And okay. so, um, like the more, and, and like what I want you to be thinking about is I want you to look at like last month and like, if I could coach you every month, I would be like, Debbie, how many emails did you get last month? Okay. okay. And then next month I want you to double up and then let's talk in a month. And I want you to come back. You got 500 last month or you got 300. I want you to come back with 600 and you're going to go, Nick, how do I do that? I'm going to say, I'm, okay, we've got some resources for you for idea generation. There's a, there's a resource that's like how, to, uh, how to add leads. Or I'm sorry, uh, what is it? The ideas list for generating leads. It's this master list that we put together. It's in our resources. It's in the show notes too, okay? It'll be in the show notes because it's important for everybody on here. Um, and uh, you can use that 
to go down and try each of these things. They have worked really well for different art storefronts members. Doesn't mean everyone's going to work for you. Yeah. Uh, it just means that look at this, get your own ideas from it. Use it as an idea generation machine, but spend 90% of your time just filling up that funnel. You, an artist business is a business like any other business. It's, it, there's a sales funnel. You put people in the top, you put leads in the top, and some yeah. sales come out the bottom, right? So yeah. if you focus, if you guys all focus on filling up the top as much as possible and spend the vast majority, majority of your time doing that, you mm -hmm. literally don't need to worry about what size you have activated on your website or what media types. It all takes care of itself, right? Like okay. you will convert more of them on your website and things like that, but it's just a numbers game. It's just, it's literally as simple as that. And so I want, I, I, I can't wait until everybody, you know, I try to think of things that I can do to make this happen. It starts with the presentation, but I just want everybody to report to me what your, how many emails, i.e. leads you collected every single month. Because I, I know if you guys do that, you're going to be thinking about like, oh my gosh, what are the things that I'm doing that aren't generating leads, right? Like, and how many things am I doing on a, on a monthly basis that aren't actually moving that needle? Because if you're not doing it, you literally are not moving the needle of your business. I can, I can analyze the health or the current state of any art business by just tracking the number of leads that they generated over the last month. And if it's flat or if it's like, it's not really growing, then I can, I can go, okay, they're, they're not, this business is not on the path to grow, you know? Because you've got to collect those leads and then eventually those leads close. So the, the, the sooner that you are collecting more and more of those, um, the better off you're going to do. So it's literally like wow. the, the major thing that you need to focus on like right now is just like anything else, make a list of everything that is distracting you from getting mm -hmm. leads. Okay. And just start crossing them off. You know, like I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this i'm not doing that like just get emails acquire those leads you know okay oh and, wow and on top of that on top of that look at every way that you have ever collected leads or wherever you are collecting sales online or off okay and realize that those places are like that's the first place to go look at Wait a minute. What are you doing right around here? Am I even collecting? Leads? I mean, I, I you'll hear in that presentation that I say, like ninety percent of the artists that I talk to when they do when they've done shows in their past or even now, they're not even collecting leads there. They might get five yeah. sales, but they didn't realize that every show they could have been collecting two to three or twenty to thirty times the amount of emails and leads at the time of that show. And um, I, I know I'm kind of going off on this right now. It's so important. There was a study that that Art Basel, or no, no, it was this outfit in Switzerland. This came out with, and it was in reference to Art Basel. Um, that this most recent one, uh, wherever it was, I forget where it was. I don't think it was the US, but they had to shut it down and they were talking about how they did this virtual gallery thing, right? And how um, the majority of the sales actually came from people going to the artist's website um, and not on the virtual gallery. But the stat that they said, means everything. It was only 60, uh, only 64% of sales will happen on the spot for an artist. So that means if you are not collecting leads, you're leaving 36% on the table always. Right? So that's, that's just like a major lesson for anybody that's doing things in person or wherever you're selling, um, to make sure that you're collecting the leads so that you can get that other 36% of the sales over the next year or however long it takes, it doesn't matter. So look at yeah. that you are getting sales because those are channels that are working, right? Art shows, it's called art shows. The majority of my sales are made at art shows. So what I, and sorry to cut you off, but what I would love is it, like one area where I can look for any reference that you have on how do I put a sign up page on my Facebook? How do I, like, if we were going to use all our social media channels right now to do what you're saying, because we can't do art shows, right? Like, I, I'm the girl who tells artists to, to start a mailing list, right? I've been doing that for 25 years, right? And, and my 10,000 snail mail, that's a, that's a cleaned up list all the time because I send promotion out right? And my email list is a cleaned up list. I constantly clean that up. And you're right. I do need to drive. That's the one thing that, that is 
out definitely a helpful point i'm not getting enough people on there so giving us a how to on how to do it on instagram how to do it on facebook how to do it you know like i don't know that would be amazing yeah. so it starts with that ideas list on how to generate leads okay so that's going to be like an idea list which it links to like some of them are like with detailed playbooks of things okay some of them don't need it but um that's that's one of the first places to start also this tactic that we've been talking about this whole call i think is a beautiful thing for you because you already have um you've already got a list and you've already got a following and so yeah. you can really take advantage right now and amplify your entire following and list by using that giveaway strategy um mm -hmm. but the giveaway strategy with these influencers and these groups right and trying to uh, i was giving advice earlier to vincent He's kind of oh. in a somewhat similar position to you where he's been making sales for years. Oh, uh, okay. You know, it, like through, he, he's in galleries and- Yeah, I'm in a gallery yeah. too. Yeah, and, and, I, and what I said was, um, I would love for him, he, he actually didn't have the following though. He was in the position where, you know, he, he hasn't been collecting a lot of emails. He only had 150 and a small social following. Um, and so uh, what we told him to do was, to um, use the tactic of contacting the Facebook group uh, owners, finding and uh, and the Instagram influencers, and we have a playbook for this. It's in the okay. show. Okay, that's what we're going to be like really investing in, and we may have a workshop on it on Friday or sometime here Great. soon because we really believe that for you guys, this is like the highest ROI activity that you can do right now, given the pandemic. You know, yeah. and that everything has to be online. I think this could be really successful for you. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, on my survey, just so you know, um, it's getting sent out on my email. Well, it got sent out on my email list several times. It's on my Facebook. I forgot to put it on Instagram, but I it's required that you have to, in order to be in the giveaway, you have to give me your email list. So I wasn't even thinking in terms of collecting new identities. And I really appreciate you pointing that out to me because I can see that that's a big thing because I haven't done those this year. Are you following the marketing calendar decently closely? Um, part of the issue is I'm juggling a lot of balls. I lost my business partner, um, and so that's okay. I, yeah, so I no, but I should. <laughs> well, I only I only say that just because we have done so much updating on it that the okay. on the giveaway is so uh, good. And I mean, Patrick okay. and I are literally like you know making these changes, right? Like okay. Um, and and we're doing it we're changing them once a month you know based on like a, it might be a it might be a sentence here or there you know that we find that works okay better. like i'll give you an example um we we have found that um you can get higher quality people opting into your giveaway if you tease the fact that by entering the giveaway um everybody who enters is going to get a you know a discount at the end of it for a couple yeah. of days because the, I think, and this, you know, this was actually my idea that we ended up testing because I was like, you know, I don't enter a lot of giveaways personally. I just don't really care, you know, but, but if I want to buy your art and I have it in my mind, like I might buy your art one day, I want the discount. Yeah. You know? I want yeah. the discount. And, um, and if I know you're going to give me one, then I might opt in. In fact, I will literally opt in only for that purpose. I know I'm not going to win. You know, that's the way I look at any giveaway, right? Like yeah. winning the lottery, I'm not going to, I'm not going to win, but yeah. I will take that. And that's how, and you love that because those people have a buying intent, right? Yes. So they may not, they may not end up buying at that moment because maybe they thought that they were and then they might not, but you've got somebody now on your list that's quality, right? So. And I do that at the end. I offer them because I've done Jeff Walker's product launch formula. In fact, he's featured me on his site. I'm the only artist that has ever used his. He's a, a social media guru who sold the first $6,000 online. Um, but I wanted to ask you one thing. Would you still be willing to look at my website just to see if there's any other thing that you think is, is wrong? Because at one point I had a ton of images. And then I, then I, um, Giovanna suggests, or someone suggested, I don't, Sanjay, I think, suggested that I don't have so many choices because the number one reason why people don't buy online is because they love everything. I actually surveyed that. <laughs> so now I have collections. 
But anyway, if you, I don't want to take everybody's time up anymore, but if, if you could just do an overall view of my site, if you see anything majorly out, you could let me know. I would love to just rule that out first. And then I definitely want to do this playbook. I'm looking, I'm looking at it. I mean, the only, I, I see nothing. Okay, great. I mean, like right off the bat, like I literally see nothing. I'm just right back on the stats. I'm like, you actually, you've got decent traffic. The quality is just not as good. Okay. So you, okay. You might, when the, like if, if, if your contact conversion rate is roughly like 3% on the majority of your traffic, right? Um, and we want it to be at a minimum five, let's call it six just to make it easier. Like you basically can take your traffic and just divide it in half. And that's like your real traffic, right? Uh, okay. Kind of like vanity traffic. And so you just need, you just need way more. And I think as you do these tactics, um, you're going to find, you're, you're going to get other quality sources. You just got to okay. get lines in the water. Like I want you to, I want you to try a bunch of these different things um, and, and get like 10 fishing poles in the water, you know? Master fisherman here. <laughs> that makes sense though. Like you know where you need to focus. Okay. My God, thank you so much. I really appreciate your help. You're welcome. Oh, sorry. I had to move my mic off. Um, Debbie, you got no problems here. If if the overall goal is to stop burning the shoe leather and standing in a booth eight hours a day and 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 you know trucking those supplies all over the country you've got nothing to worry about you you your art sold you have a huge list we just need to teach you to get a little bit better at leveraging it and it's going to be very very easy to do that for you so uh yeah yeah good exactly I'm loving Debbie, the how many like think in your head every, like get a thing on your wall like that you look at every day one thing it's like how many emails did i get today do you know what I mean? Like, I literally, like, I want to be in your head. I want you to be thinking of me going, I, Nick is wondering, like, how many emails I got. Because if I'm not getting emails, my business is not really moving forward. If you want to 5X your business, go increase the size of your email list, like, just massively, right? Like, that's what you've got to do. It's, it's not rock and stuff. Even if, even if your contact conversion rate stays at 3%, I don't even care, right? Like, for some businesses, it might just end up being that way. Like, that, that might be, like just the nature of your business. And so all that means is you just got to put more people on the top than, than maybe somebody else, but it, it doesn't matter. Your business is what your business is. We can't change that. I'm not going to sit here and go, wait, well, you know, let's nitpick, like where are the quality sources and like spend three months trying to figure out what that is. It's like, no, I'm like, we're going everywhere. We're going to go try to get leads everywhere. And, and, and the sooner that we can do that, the faster your business is going to grow. Okay. All right. Got, we've got one more question. It looks like, um, and it's Matt Pearson. He's on phone. I hope he's still there. I'm going to go ahead and try and unmute him quickly. Uh, Matt, if you're there, you're unmuted. You there? Oh yeah. Um, nice. I, I don't hey, know. Well, uh, like, I don't know what the question I should be asking is I'm like, I'm just trying everything I can and I, I'm still not getting the quality leads that, uh, Nick and, uh, uh you are, uh, um, uh, espousing to, um, I mean, to give an idea of what I do, uh, I, I do post two to five items on Instagram through Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, four TikToks a day. I do all the social posts, like up to 30 pieces of content a day. Uh, and I do about one to two blogs every month. Uh, if I were to self audit myself, um, I don't do the romance marketing as often as I like. I, I can get maybe one in a month. Um, but not often. I have not done a uh, a raffle or a contest, but I got two metal prints lined up for that. So I'm going to be loading that up for this month. Not both, just one for this month. And then I'm probably going to move it up, uh, bump the next one for the other month. Um, uh, as far as art shows, I don't get into art shows. I don't uh, have a, a tent or fa I'm not in like an art fair. So I don't really expose myself in those in those situations. Uh, I do get in the gallery shows, which is a different type of beast because I can't really like place a, a, a fishbowl at the entrance and say, hey, drop this in here uh, in the same type of situation that you could at, at like a tent. You know, so um, before this happened, I was getting into some shows and I was planning on doing some live painting, having a fishbowl slash raffle. Um, during the opening to kind of get some people uh, uh, to 
kind of opt in via business card on to my website, but I haven't that 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 was kind of washed after this whole COVID thing kind of started. Everything's been postponed a couple months. I don't know when that's going to uh, start back up. So I have like two shows or exhibitions that are in the works or postponed or maybe not even going to be uh, happening now. So I don't know. Um, I just need some like uh, like ideas on how to pursue and how to kind of uh, get more, um, what would you call it, quality leads. Like I, I just have, uh, uh, I just learned this, this phrase. I have a bunch of tire kickers. They, they, they love my work, but they're never going to buy. They're just like, yeah, that's real nice. Um, why does it cost so much? You know, like, and I have to I waste that time trying to uh, describe this, the, this uh, basically have to explain to them why it costs this much. And in the whole grand scheme of things, if I compare myself Price wise, I'm in the medium or in the like in between. I'm not as like cheap, but I'm not astronomical. But I, I find myself around people that are out of my price, are not able to afford my work, and I'm not in the level where people want to buy. Like I'm not in the um, the lead count, like the re lead range where people want to buy my work. Like meaning that like, I don't have a client base where are willing that are willing to buy two thousand dollar paintings on the regular. You know, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah, not I'm in the client. I'm looking at your site right now, um, and and like, yeah, you're you're you. I mean, you're you're selling prints, you know, smaller sizes, like in the, you know, forty dollar range. Like, it's not that's not expensive at all. Yeah, um, yeah, but that, that's that's like one. That was recently. Uh, <laughs> it, it happened so like that's like the first one, really. The other ones are my uh, my own purchases. Got it. Okay. Oh, okay. Wait, hang on. I might be looking at yeah. it. Hang, hang on. Hang on. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wasn't looking at your specific stats. So it's not for lack of try, trying. I just like, a, I'm just not hitting the right areas, I guess. Yeah, I'm taking a look at the site now. So you, are you selling well offline? You're just, you've been struggling online. Is that, is that the long and the short of it? Um, I, I, I can sell a, 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 a $2,000 painting, a $1,400, $1,400 painting, but that happens once every blue moon, like, because I don't get enough shows and I don't, I, I, um, I'm not able to produce enough to be out in, in a regular, like art show venue, you know, when a, when a painting takes 20 to 50 hours to make, uh, it's hard to accrue enough paintings to do a, a, a craft or art show circuit. But my my work's gotten a little bit quicker. I've changed what I've been doing, and I got more work down. To, uh, that's going to be uploaded sometime in the next month. I had a professional ph photographer do some uh, some cataloging for me, save some time, so I can work focus on my own work, stuff like that. Okay, got it. Um, yeah, I would need to look. I would need to look at the stats too and see see what is coming in. Because if you're if you're posting at that clip on all the various different social sites, that's fantastic. I love that you're turning out that what's level. What's the best content. way to show you this, Pat? I got I got I, I could screenshot it right here. All right, okay. And Matt, you're one. you're on a call, so the the replay on this thing will be available. It still says the host disabled attendee screen share. Yeah, I know. I just need to move it to you. You're good. It's still saying it. All right, now you're good. Okay. So this is what it looks like right here. So I just went uh, August 2019 through the beginning of the year. And again, he's on he's on uh, a phone call connection, so he's not going to be able to see this. He's going to look at it after the That's fact. Okay. So, yeah, just kind of you know. I, I can see it. I can see it. I, I'm actually connected to the uh, computer, but I don't have a camera or anything, so I just do oh, it through okay. a phone call. So yeah, the, 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 the obvious like problem here is just lack of traffic and, you know, gathering leads. Right. And you said that you said that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so that, how long have you been, how, how long have you been? Well, and, and here's the thing, if you're doing a bunch of whatever you're doing on like Facebook, Instagram and all that stuff, 
it's not getting anybody back to your site. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. you can see right here that like Facebook, um, yeah, like you've got 58 people from mobile, 25 from just the regular, <clears throat> and then only four showing from Instagram from August through the end of the year. I don't know when you actually launched though. You might, that might not be the whole time, but, um, but it's just, it's not a lot, right? It's not, I it's know, not, I know. Yeah. So, so again, you know, you might be in a situation where like some of the other people that we spoke to earlier, where your, your current following is just, it's just not enough. So no, if you're, if you're current, this is, this is an important thing to say. If your current following is not enough um, and you're doing, you know, you're posting and you're posting links back to your site and you're, you're following like our art marketing calendar, at least like the way that we're telling you to romance market, at least somewhat here and there, and it's not generating traffic, then that following that you have is not enough. And it doesn't matter how often you post, you know, yeah. at, at the time, it's not going to, that's not going to change like, you know, overnight. Right. And so you need to move to plan B to something else that's going to actually get you some leads. Right. Um, good, and so, good I so, so again, I, to, to reinforce, I think that you got to get on board on the, uh, um, on this, uh, tactic that we keep talking about here, which is, the you know the, the this key pandemic tactic of of contacting the Facebook group owners and the Instagram uh, influencers and you know we, we've got the playbook that we're building out for that. Yeah. Um, do you have an email list? Yeah. How many people are on uh, it? Two fifty. Two fifty. I I have more, but a lot of, like uh, I found that like after I started uh, doing a lot of uh, emails, they started opting out. Yeah. That just means they probably just didn't belong there in the first place. Yeah, I, I know that. And I think that's pretty good for not being in an art fair circuit where I can actually have opportunities to get a lot of, uh, of emails. Not bad. You know? um, have you ran a giveaway yet? Oh, you said you're about to, right? You're, do your first one? Yeah, I've, I've, I've been doing a lot of thinking about giveaways. And I, as I said, I got two metal prints, 16 by 20. Nice. Uh, uh, like really large ones uh, um, that I've I'm, I'm been basically procrastinating uh, starting it because I was like, man, I don't know when's a good time to do this. I've been really busy. Um, um, so I got two, and I'm going to start one in conjunction with uh, your uh, best practice with your basically your calendar this month uh i basically just kind of getting that ready um and then the next month i'm gonna start another one and i was uh i was actually going to uh run a a raffle at a bar that i work at with one of those pieces and have it there uh during uh, uh hockey season um and uh, run an ad that, that forwards it to uh, run a, a, a targeted ad on Facebook that was supposed to target like people that like bars, people that are in the area or where I live at, so that people would see that pop up in their Facebook feed um, and people like sports. And I was gonna run that in conjunction with my, my, uh, um, my print but that fell through because uh i don't that the bar is not uh open at the moment um so I, I had a lot of ideas i've been um uh, uh painting a lot um i've been uh getting about 20 i'm gonna have i'm on, I'm on track for about 20 paintings this this month which is really good and i was thinking about doing a very uh which is why i asked earlier doing a a a, a monthly uh raffle for some of these original paintings because I'm, I'm making so many so quickly and they're not really, to me, they're not high quality paintings uh, because they're just done on, on wood panel and they're not even, it's not even cradled. So it's not like they have to frame it themselves and they have to have it specially made so they can be hung. Otherwise they're gonna be using L nails to hold the thing in a wall. Uh, so that's why I, I don't have as much of a financial uh, uh, burden making them. and. Um, they're really interesting. I, I'm, I'm kind of happy to see uh, what the uh, response will be when I start putting more, them online. So yeah. I have a lot of ideas just taking some time and working my balls off. 
Yeah, I got you. Um, so yeah, I, I think like just given your, given your stats and like given where you're at, like you're just like at the very like beginning of, of driving, like, like, like not anybody seeing your website and not anybody seeing your art. Like that's, that's like the truth, you know? Um, but I, if I wanted to, if I, I'm not been in, sh I, I, okay, let's backtrack. I've been in shows for 10 years. I've been to a lot of shows, gallery shows, not, not like, you know, art fairs or anything. And I, I got a lot of accolades, but I don't got, it's not, accolades is not giving money, uh, putting money in my bank. Yeah. You know, it's one of those, it's one of those like uh, uh, stereotypical artists that are well respected in the area, in, in, in the, in the field, but you're not, they're not going to like, you know, you're not making money off it. And I'm trying to convert from that because I'm, 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 I'm already working like three jobs, three different employers. I got so many W2s, it's not even funny. Um, <laughs> and so I'm trying to change that up. Matt, I just got to tell you that, first of all, I love, like, you are, you are one of the major reasons, like, why we exist, you know? Um, like, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that, like, the way that you're thinking about this uh, and, cha and, like, uh, changing from, like, you know, to, to, be, to be running this more like a business because, you know, that's exactly what you needed. You're doing the right thing, right? You're thinking about this the right way. You're on the right path. The fact that you've been selling for 10 years and it's, you know, it's worked and all that stuff. It just tells me that, you know, if we could rewind the clock back, you know, uh, and have started this 10 years ago, you'd be doing extremely well right now. We can't unfortunately do that. We just have to start with where we're at. And yeah, number one priority, the number one priority is just to, you know, when I was saying a second ago that like nobody's seeing your art, you're like, wait a minute, hold on a second. But the truth is, is that if they're not going to your website, they're seeing whatever you've done and what you've done in the past and what you're doing on social media, but it's not translating into people coming to your site, yeah, which yeah. is translating into people buying yet, right? So could, could, I, could I interject for a second? Oh yeah. Um, uh, um, with the post, um, I, was, I, I stopped tagging my website in the post. Could that be part of it? Because yeah. I, I heard, I heard that uh, um, I was listening through a lot of podcasts saying like, don't tag your website in your post because Instagram and Facebook's going to throttle the, the attention away from you because they don't want to keep, have people come off the actual so platform. And so I stopped doing that because like, well, I don't want people to, I don't want them to like not show my stuff because I have my, my website tagged on here. So I didn't know, I was like, hmm, question. You know, question mark. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go. Pat, were you gonna jump in? Yeah, let me. Yeah, let, let me deal with that. So, in a sense, that's right, but that's not where you need to be worried or where where you need to get focused. I mean, if, if I'm you, I'm gonna say, I have a range of different styles on my site, um, a whole bunch of different ones, and I got to figure out what are the best, what are what, what's gonna give me the best shot of selling, right? And so, if you could do offline, we would recommend that first because that's the easiest way to get that feedback on like what's gonna sell best, right? Because it's, it's exactly like you said. You can't take Facebook fans or Instagram likes or any of the rest of those accolades over to the ATM, type in your PIN number, and put it into your account, right? Like it doesn't work. So I think you've got chops as an artist. You have a bunch of different styles. It seems to me you probably haven't hit the style that's going to resonate best with your particular buyers. That's what I think perhaps you might already have it, and you just haven't gotten it in front of the right eyeballs. So it could be some combination thereof. But I think that's what you need to narrow down on and, and, and like really hone in on. And, you know, I would ask you out of everything that you've created so far, what is what is produced like the most interest and sold the most? 